Welcome back, everybody, to the next episode of our Rise of the Rune Lords campaign. I am joined again by our illustrious heroes of Sandpoint, who, in our last session, uh, after a week of, we'll say downtime, but that's not really what it was, um, culminating in a boar hunt with Alden Foxglove. Were successful in bagging not one but two boars from the Tickwood Forest, and that is where we pick up after a uh, quite harrowing battle for some and a surprise boar attack. We're standing here waiting, ready. The boars have just been. Loaded up onto the backs of some horses. What are you guys doing? Is there anything said on the way back to uh, Sandpoint? Mm -hmm. I mean, look. This is true. I can attest that in my experience, it is not. It is incredibly gamey. Almost oh, certainly, but we're not there yet. No, the, what what the rest of the uh, the group is doing is just basically getting everything ready, patching up any injuries, anything like that, um, which I don't actually believe there was any. Lucky you. Yeah, you, you. That's a little different. So, it's, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Sure. After a few days rest, you'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eventually. Okay. So as a as a point then, as a point then, the 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 good Alden Foxglove um is very interested in Voron and his well-being. Um he is, he apologizes profusely saying, "I'm so sorry. I did not mean for you to get hurt." Completely ignoring say you saying that you're fine. Just ignores you outright. I'm so sorry, Master Master Varen. Uh, I I'm 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 I feel entirely culpable for your for your injuries. Uh, allow me to ensure once we get back, we have the finest healing possible. I will visit the chapel myself, procure a healing potion, and bring it to you at your home if you so wish. Yeah. I shall do my utmost, Voren. My utmost, Voren. I I still feel I still feel terrible, but I will do my best. Uh, of course, of of course, yes, um, yes, of course. Ah, uh, yeah, go on. Okay, you don't have to.
He may do. 14 and 12. Um... He he seems he's he seems very earnest that he feels bad that you are harmed. He he legitimately feels absolutely terrible that you are harmed, and yeah. He feels terrible about what happened to you. That's all you get. <laughs> he he truly feels terrible about what happened to you. In some way. <laughs> Honestly, that made hilarious. So funny. So for some reason my bad boy. That's fine. Don't worry about it. So, uh, Raven, you said you were going to jump in as for some for something. What was that about? Mm hmm. Oh, most certainly. Yep. This is this is exactly what's happening. What are you doing? Um, so side by side, like there's probably, I don't know, as, as pretty, pretty much as close as Alden can get without being dangerous riding side by side, he's like right next to him. And he's just chattering, chattering up a storm. Go ahead and roll a knowledge, knowledge and ability. Bear with me one moment. You actually have that one at 22. Sorry, I just noted a glare. What was that, sorry? Juicy rumors. Um, so what was, the, what was the question again? In, in what way? Um... Honestly, yeah, yeah. Um, he's he's he is a minor noble, so he's not super important. In fact, you most likely, yeah. Uh, our, below the families, but since you married in, you're probably on a very similar level. Um, so quite minor. He, as far as you know, he is, he's not the last remaining foxglove. However, there are, there were, there was, hmm, yeah, uh, there was, there was rumor about his father and his mother, both having died in their manner um, a few years back. Um, you don't really know exactly how long, but a few years back. Long enough for most people to have forgotten about it and just accepted it for as it is. But uh, if you look on the map here, right over on the left-hand side, there is Foxglove Manor. Same, he, he practically owns it. However, as far as you're aware, he's never visited. Mm. Dozens? But you don't really have, there's no real credence to any of them, as far as you're aware. Um, one, one says that uh, his father 
So Foxglove Senior, I don't. It wasn't. I don't know his name off the top of my head, but I can find that for information for you if you so wish. Um, his father was having an affair with someone, and his mother murdered him and then jumped from the cliff that the um, manor is is on. Another one says that it was the other way around, that the, the mother was having an affair and the father did that. Um, there, there also was rumour that there was a, an, an outbreak of, of a plague in the house that they both succumbed to, but Alden didn't for some reason or another. Um, yeah, they're probably the three that you find most interesting. <laughs> But no one really knows for sure. Uh, he, so he was in the middle of a in the middle of a sentence for sure. So he cuts off and says, "Oh, uh, I'm 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 sorry. How do you mean?" Uh, <laughs> to be honest, uh, the family business takes quite care of itself. I don't need to have any input into it. How do you mean? Uh, I mean, oh, of course, of course. I, I direct. I might meet with some people every month or so, have a meeting, decide the direction of the business, but I, I don't do anything. Much below me. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. All right, all right, okay. Uh, can I get the both of you to roll a bluff check for me, please. Love this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Nice. Okay. Uh, so, you definitely see him track Vorin as Vorin slows down. Uh, but he does keep speaking to you, since he is in the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> he has noticed that Boren did slow down and extricate himself from the conversation. He did, he did notice that. Go ahead. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. I see, I see. Uh, okay, cool. Well, I'll, with that with with that kind of bluff check, I am very okay with with uh, him being interested in staying in a conversation with you at the moment. Um, Warren, you wanted to slow down and speak to uh, Solomon. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep.
Hemlock. Same. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh Wrath. Um Oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna leave we're gonna we're 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 gonna leave that. What what Merc? Not Wrath, sorry. What are you doing on the way home? On the way home to Sandpoint. Home, back, whichever. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um so one of the one of the guards <laughs> one of one of the guards and you what what is your perception bonus? Just the just the what do you add to perception? Five. Okay. Uh, one of the guards rides up to you, and you you get a bit of a get a bit of a feeling that wants to ask you something. Doesn't really know how to how to how to how to broach the subject. Um, but eventually, eventually he sort of grits his teeth and says, uh, "Excuse me." Uh, um, Merc, sir? Um, I was wondering, I was wondering, uh, I'm curious, you, you, you're, ah, uh, how do I put this without sounding horrible, of, Demonic blood, yes. Yeah, right. Yes. So, um, I was I was wondering, your your feet, uh, are they traditional, uh, goat's feet? And he, you see him just like, oh man, that was the worst possible way to ask that. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, I I apologize. I I I I'm I'm sorry. I'll 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 leave you be now, sir. And you see you see him go red from like the collar all the way up to the roots of his hair, like super embarrassed that he even asked this. Uh, you do notice. Yeah. Go on. What were you going to say? Okay. <laughs> uh as you as you sort of ride on, you you see uh that guard go back to the others and um you see him like slap one in the arm and then hold his hand out sort of expectantly and every one of the other guards hands over a smooth, a small sack of coin. You feel like you were just the subject of some kind of bet. And the gentleman that came and asked you the question definitely won.
Yep. Yeah, no, fair enough. Um, so as you arrive back on the outskirts of Sandpoint, Alden says, um, well, I know most of you are staying at the Rusty Dragon, so um, I'm going to take these back to Amiko, and uh, she will definitely do something with them. Uh, most likely tonight, if the... Uh, and he looks around at the sun, which is... It's probably about 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, so maybe later on tonight. Depending. May, um... May have this first thing sort of tomorrow morning or tonight. We'll see. Come by the Rusted Dragon in any case, we'll have some drinks and a big dinner. And uh, as you head into town, he heads straight for the Rusty Dragon. What are you guys doing? Head home. All right. Uh, when you get back into Sandboy, it's probably about 2.30 in the afternoon. Or the equivalent of. Okay, um, yeah. The, 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 uh, white deer, wasn't it? I think we said. Hmm. Stag, white deer, one of them. White stag, I believe. Um, so. Do you know where that is? How are you going to find out? Did you? Did you? No. Merc was there. Oh, for sure. Yeah, definitely. And the first person you ask says, oh, I, I thought they shut the place down. Um, I thought they were moving to Magnamar. Uh, well, if they're still open, they're the, near, near, near the North Gate. Look for the, look for the sign with the, uh, with the white, with the white deer on it. So that'll be where it is. Okay. You head up that way, it's past the cathedral, right up to, right up to here, where, uh, you are correct, where you fought off and first met, fought off the goblins and first met Alden Foxglove. Um, you look on the left side of the road there. Um, this is where it should be, but you don't see a sign anywhere. Um... Do you look through some windows? It's not empty per se. However, look through the window on the, on the building on the left-hand side, and it is incredibly sparsely uh, furnished. And you thought you, you thought you saw someone moving around inside, but could have just been a large rat it doesn't it's not open there are the doors aren't open and there doesn't look to be any people inside as far as you can tell really except for that one sort of sliver of movement i mean there's doors and there's windows yeah yeah for sure um the doors are locked windows are shut at least on the first floor it is a two-story tavern. Two-story building, rather. Okay. Yeah, no worries. Um, just roll me a, just a perception check, just for fun, just for, just for funsies. You you definitely heard some. You, as you walk away, you definitely hear something moving around. Possibly someone moving furniture, but you can't really tell. Okay. 
Alrighty. Not a problem. Head back to the Rusty Dragon, not a worry. What are the rest of y'all doing? Voron's going home. Solomon's done this. Raven and Merc, what are y'all doing? Perfect. Not a problem. Uh, Amiko is, has got a... Not a center table for you, but not a corner table either. You do notice at the bar... There is a long-haired, red-headed, quite a young girl. Um, as you get a little closer, she's absolutely jacked. Like, bodybuilder, kind of. And she's got a massive um, greatsword slung across her back. Looks to be made from bone of some kind. Fair, fair. She's, she's like, you put her age at maybe 16, 17 years old. She's very young. Yeah. You catch the, uh, you catch sort of the tail end of a conversation. Uh, Amiko is telling her about... Um, a group that came through earlier, probably a couple weeks ago now, and just and basically it's like if well if you leave sort of in the next few days you might catch them before they get where they go. Uh -huh. Yeah, for sure. Not a worry. Uh huh. Clearly. Yep. All right. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, just just like a just like a bubble of darkness. Uh, twenty foot bubble. All right, so you okay? So you cast darkness. Half of the tavern room is just plunged into darkness. Completely, complete darkness. And you hear, hey, who turned out the lights? And then you hear that a couple more times. Hey, who turned out the lights? And after, after like probably 20 or so seconds, it is uh, bright again. And Amiko looks over. Amiko, Amiko looks over at you and just shakes her head. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it definitely got dispelled by someone. You didn't see who, but... You're pretty sure you can guess. Uh, as a note, as a note, redhead lady's gone. You didn't see her leave. <laughs> just be glad she didn't. Just be glad she didn't come after you for that, buddy. Alright. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, um, honestly, I've never seen her before. Um, she introduced herself as Hyrule, and um, she was looking for the rest of her group. They, she gave me a description. They passed through a week or so ago, and I'm assuming she's going to meet up with them. Get to stay behind for some business or another. I gather that I have you and your group to thank for the two quite fine uh, wild boar that I have roasting out the back. Is that correct? Uh, I can't believe that for a moment. Vorin wouldn't be doing something like that, would he now? Come on. A man of the cloth. On a boar hunt? No. Heroic. I mean, he he does strike an imposing figure with that hammer of his. A quite a quite hero, a true hero of Sandpoint. Oh, oh, of course not, of course not. It is a big hammer. I'm very impressed with Foreign's big hammer. Oh, did he? Well, uh, if I may, if I may, ask him to appear for dinner and I'll make sure Alden doesn't bother him. It's all Alden can talk about. It's strange. He seems quite taken with the man. I mean... <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, that wasn't too foreign. That was organized by Vorin. However, uh... I can I can sort something out if you if you wish to deliver it to him. I I don't have anyone spare at the moment, but it, you could if you if you so wish. And it won't be much because I am I I don't have a lot on hand. Um, but I know he's quite a simple man. Please ask him to come by for dinner. I will, I'll I'll have something for him. Of course, how strong? Oh, okay. For for Varen or for yourself? Nice. Good, good. Yes. Okay. Uh, so she sort of does this one here, cracks her knuckles, and she says, I'll get something whipped up for you in a moment. And she turns around and she, one of one of the kegs on the wall, it's a, um, just a, a wooden one. And she t uh, turns the tap on it and then turns it off and um, grabs, can't believe I'm about to say this, but what's basically a takeaway lid on top sits the it's a it's it's a carved it's a carved lid for for a tanket that that just clicks on top and she puts that down and uh puts that down in front of in front of you and uh a meal comes out yeah 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 a flagon yes for sure <laughs> why not <laughs> take away lid yep that's that's exactly what it is for sure um Wow, it's a roadie. <laughs> um, and she hands you a bowl. Um, hands you a bowl, and I'm sure he has eating utensils at his home. Feel free. Hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. No, no, he's got his own home. Yeah, so yeah, which which you have been to. So, yeah, that's where he forged the buckler for you. Yeah. Of course, the injured hero of Sandpoint. And, um... Head over to Boren's... Boren, you hear a knock at the door. Oh, you were, okay. So, did you invite Toshi in, Oren? 
Of course, of course. So it would be rude of you not to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course. Mm-hmm. Yep. So low for you. Like, 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 like three quarter size furniture. It's a three quarter chair. <laughs> it's a smaller chair. Yeah. I mean, fair, fair. It is built to accommodate dwarves, so, yeah. Sturdy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that'd be great. All right, so, certainly, yeah. There's not too much difference. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yep, fair. <laughs> fair. Yep. It's crunchy. hate you. <laughs> nice. That sounds so good. Yeah, yeah. Sesame seeds. Sesame seeds. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. I've breathed in flour. It's about at this time, uh, after a, probably you, the tea, the, the kettle has just started to whistle, you hear a knock at the door. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, he, he's a he's a big boy. <laughs> Knees up around his ears, kind of thing. <laughs> of course, of course, yeah, yeah. No, of course. <laughs> right? Mhm. Mm
Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, you do smell some freshly cooked and cooling meat coming from that bowl. It smells pretty good. I mean, this is only an afternoon snack. Mm -hmm. uh wrath as a point um you did see solomon head out with a flagon and that did you follow did you go as well you knew he was going to to see boron not really you <laughs> There's a couple people watching you. Hmm. Yeah, it just happens. Yeah, look. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so you hear another knock at the door. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Rath's standing at the door. Uh, Merc, sorry, is standing at the door. Wow, that's hard. Sorry, but sorry, man. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm good. Yeah, you, you, there's definitely a water barrel for forging. It's got a lid to it. It's definitely a water barrel for forging. So, yeah. I mean, I'm assuming... I, I, I thought it was, like, a super open plan. And you can just drag it. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> they're, they're making themselves at home. Yeah. Uh, spears and shields. Weapon, we weapons and a shield each. Mm To who? Other group at large, gotcha. Hmm?
He seems genuinely confused. Uh, I assume you have a larder of some kind, yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. Just, just hitting the hard stuff. Yeah, loves it's, it's good tea. It's nice, a little chocolatey. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. Go on. If you so wish. Oh, fuck. Hang on. Sorry. No. I need, I need to know right now. Chuck, are you listening to my stream? Can you please? Because I don't think I've cough. I've th I don't th I think I've had something muted. Yeah. No, you could hear, you could hear, you could hear yourselves. You That's probably through the time. probably from from the from from the stream or yeah because it was on my phone. Okay, so it, it was coming through earlier. Let me just try. Yeah. No, it's not now. It's no. not now. Oh, hang on. I'm checking. Stop. Stop. I'm just gonna disconnect from the phone technical, call for a second so I can check. Technical difficulties. Yeah, Raven, if you could check, please. That'd be great. I don't know what happened, but like he said, everything was coming through, so I'm hoping it did. Okay, can everyone be quiet for one second? Yep. Yeah. Okay, Adam, say hello. Hello. Okay, next, Tor. Hello. Okay. Um, next, I need Wrath. Hello! Seems to be going through just fine. Ah, right, cool. That's fine. Yeah, it is. Maybe it just didn't record. You, you definitely heard yourself, like, you guys, not me, not through the Discord yeah. earlier, though, 100%. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. 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 All right, cool. Hopefully, That's... hopefully it just hasn't recorded. I can download the um the vod later. Yeah. Yep. Wonderful. Okay. So does does Vord have like, like a couch in their house? Yes, I will have a couch definitely. Okay. You know yeah, the I thing that. I was saying I'm stepping out as he does, and I just like as he walks to the rusty dragon, I walk through the rest of the town, just looking around. Uh, you know the, you know the thing that um, when you're younger, you used to like put your back onto the floor and then like sit on the <laughs> couch. Yeah, yeah that's pretty up. much what yeah. Toshi's doing. Yes, I found a moment of peace in peculiar. Uh, how's it going? And a moment of peace and peculiar positioning or something like that. <laughs> no, uh, I found peace in a moment of peculiarity. That's how that's, it goes. That's it. That's <laughs> exactly it. Yeah. Love it. Yes. Kitty cat. Yes. That's fine. Oh, yeah. I am going to just completely ignore Toshi. She is more than welcome in my house to just be herself. Uh, I'm going to start checking off that I have all the materials mm -hmm. for, it was 40 spears and 40 shields, right? That's Ooh. what the requisition was for, yes. Toshi probably falls asleep like 30 minutes after you start with the forge, when it's yeah. like nice and warm in the house. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. So I forgot to write down the math. It was time. Yes, did. If, just find, yeah, just find one and then multiply by 40, you'll be fine. Yeah, if Roth all the math yeah. down to the day last time. Nice. <laughs> Roth what? If Roth mm -hmm. followed me out of the house, Merc. then I... Merc. Ah, yeah. Merc followed Merc. me out of the house. Yep. Then then uh, I would probably join him in the wandering around town and possibly try and uh, get him to go to the uh, hagfish with me. Oh, yeah, cool. No, Not a problem. He shrugs. He's like, all right. <laughs> I remember what happened last time. Alright. Cool. It's a trap. Ready. After about <laughs> after about half an hour, um Toshi, you are nice and toasty warm. You fall asleep easily. And um <laughs> Baron, you most certainly do not have all of the materials you need. You don't need to get too much so. more though. But yeah. um has Solomon try uh, not to trip over Toshi. He's he's yeah. he's mostly working outside, so he's really oh, no. not even disturbing I was, you at all. If he was going to go through the house to go and get more materials, I was right. just going to make the joke of "Don't trip over the Toshi." <laughs> yeah, don't trip over! Don't trip <laughs> over the Toshi. Um, cool. So, Merc and Solomon head over to the Hagfish now or a little later. Uh, do we have enough time, do you think, now before, uh, the, the, the evening meal at the Rusty Dragon? Uh, it's probably about, at this point, say about 3.30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Maybe. What do you think, uh, Merc? Mm hmm? Uh, head to the Hagfish, or do we go back to the Rusty Dragon? Well, I mean, I'm already. We're already heading that way, anyways. Might as well Let's grab a drink, and we can head back later. Sounds good. Cool. Okay, on to the hagfish. Head over to the hagfish, and uh, you see a rather, rather burly-looking sailor head out the front door. See you guys. Grin and head back in. Um, All right, as he does. No, look, look. No, as he does. Yeah. I'm like, you know, like the brawler is like ahead of me. I use Mage Hand, pinch the guy's ass. Don't only look ahead and just stand there. It's like, you know, he feels like an, like a hand grabs his ass and a little crunch. He, and turns around and all he sees is a brawler. So you guys, you guys, you guys are like <laughs> 20 feet away still. Yeah, but still. Up, you, guys are, you guys are still on approach. He looks around, he's like, what the? Rubs, what the? And heads back inside. <laughs> Very confused sailor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look at him pointing at him. It's like it was him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you head on inside, and 
there is a gigantic cheer from everybody seated and you look over and you see the bartender grinning up a storm waiting for you guys to come in how how many people are in the bar uh there's a good dozen to 18 or so okay i'm gonna buy a round of drinks for everybody you are immediately everybody's best friend another huge cheer goes up um that'll be a gold piece uh actually three gold pieces three gold pieces yeah and uh i'm gonna uh, i'm i'm gonna wink at the uh the proprietor and uh yep. let him let him take over from here oh for sure he says my my fine friend solomon it's good to see you back and uh I see you have another of the Heroes of Sandpoint with you. Merc, is it? He nods. Interesting. You you seem you seem like a uh rather dark and dashing fellow. How how are you finding Sandpoint so far? Uh it's quiet I'll, the way I like it. Oh, don't we all? This is why most of us live here is because it is quiet. However, in my <laughs> In my personal realm, as it were, we tend to get a little rowdy. So hopefully, hopefully that's not too uh, rough on you for that one. Mm-hmm. I wonder. So, go mm-hmm. on. What were you gonna well, say? no, it's just, it's just you know, he's just kind of looking around, kind of like you know. A little like you know how you got that board look and you just kinda like, yeah. you know, like you're looking at about random situations around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he sees so, some he sees some like like two guys talking out, like you know, they're kinda like er like you know, barking out. Yeah. He's gonna like stick his hand like this and drop a drink on somebody's flap and like Psh! and then see if he can start a bar fight, see what happens. Alright, alright. Um Go ahead and roll a <laughs> Actually, no, you don't really need to roll anything. You do so, and there you, you hear two hits. One guy hitting the other, and the other guy hitting the floor. <laughs> just lays him out cold. I was like, man, I was like, he's just sitting there like, all right, everyone, so else, in the next every, everyone else in the bar <laughs> sort of looks over <laughs> and goes back to their drinks. <laughs> I was like, who's on next week, though? Uh, I mean, <laughs> as you're, so he just seeing random fights. He just calls them random fights. In as, the you're, as you're, as you're trying to look for your next one, you look behind the bar and you see <laughs> a, uh, an aquarium with a, an incredibly mm-hmm. murky water in it. And it says, before you go destroying the rest of my bar, the bartender says, how about, <laughs> would you like to take the hagfish challenge? No, I'm good. You good? Solomon here good. took it. Solomon here took it, and he and he points up at the rafters, and there's dozens of names. And Solomon is Solomon's is one of the freshest. He even got his name, um, his name up in lights. Actually, you know, he looks at Solomon. He wants to do double or nothing. <laughs> double or nothing, Solomon. I'm not. Exactly He's sure. claiming he could do double or nothing. Well, I'm not I, sure I, will, I will take that double or nothing challenge. And you see him pick up two tankards, scoops, two <laughs> big, big drinks out of the aquarium. <laughs> he drops one in front of you, one in front of you. And he says, and for you trying to get a friend in trouble, poof, dumps it straight down in front of you, Merc. Are you going to, are you going to refuse a challenge straight to your face? Drink up, gentlemen. Oh, is he talking to me? Oh, yeah, I was like one down in one, one, one down in front of each of you. He 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 respects that you're the heroes of Sandpoint, but he's still gonna mess with you a lot. <laughs> Probably more so. I mean, I, he's 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 he stands back, arms crossed. He's waiting. The entire bar it- is watching you two now. Now, as you guys chug it, he just chugs it down. He he just chugs it down, slams it on the ground. All right, on the on the table. So just take just takes it. Yeah, yeah. All right. As you lift it up, 
It smells rank. So it is disgusting. You take, you take, you, you start chugging. I need you to roll me a fortitude save. Okay. Let's see. Are you doing the same, Solomon? Uh, sorry. Double and nothing is... Oh, yeah. Is One more, down in front of each more. of you. Okay. Yep. I'm, uh, I'm going to try and keep pace with Merc. Nice. Go ahead and roll me a fortitude save. I feel like for and Toshi now just all of a sudden Ooh. feel like I'm happy that I did not follow those two. <laughs> <Real long. laughs> that, uh, that bodes well. Yeah. So each of you, you power through Solomon. You sort of know what this is going to be like, and you sort of you brace yourself for it. One, two, three big, three big gulps. Your neck and neck right now. Get about halfway through that viscous, slimy, mucusy feeling at the back of your throat. That it just fills your mouth. And you know what? It almost feels like you could actually chew on it. Go ahead and roll me another fortitude save as you get about halfway through. <laughs> Solomon, you know what you, you you know what to expect. Chug, 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 chug. Merc. You vomit back into the into the into the cup, and half mm. like half of what you just drank is back in there. Okay. And you see the bartender. He he knows, and he just see you just see him. Keep going. <laughs> Go ahead and roll me a fortitude save, the both of you, just to finish off those last few bits. Unless you would like to give up. Merc. Solomon, you finish it off, slam it back down. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't get any better the second time. It's f- <laughs> fucking foul. It is disgusting, and you hate your entire existence right now. Merc, you try and take those couple, those other couple jugs. You finish it off. You put it down slowly. And projectile vomit all over the bar. You hear an uproar of laughter behind you. And the bartender, kind of knowing this was going to happen, is down the other end of the bar. (laughs) He's joining in. Everyone is having a great laugh. And uh, the guy that you saw leaving as you guys came in walks past nods at Solomon, and just pats you on the shoulder and says, maybe next time, and he heads out. Yeah, I said, if there, he just casts presentation on himself, cleans himself up. <laughs> That's right, he's just going to leave it leave it all over the bar? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Rough. <laughs> he's like, it is customary for, for me to clean that up for you, but, I mean, you know, if you would, if you would like to, since you can so easily, please feel free. He's dead in the eye. He's just like, fuck, clean up your own goddamn mess. <laughs> Since you can. He, use, <laughs> he uses mage hand, cleans it up, and puts it in the... <laughs> puts it in the aquarium. There you go. <laughs> cleans it up. Put it in the aquarium? <laughs> he was about to, and you see it floats right there, and just disappears. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's sitting there, gook. There you go. You see the, you see the bartender stared down. Daggers at you for a moment there. He says, "Hmm, you're uh, you're trouble, aren't you?" You knew that he was trouble when he walked in. In any case, and he <laughs> drops a couple a couple drinks down in front of you. A chaser, since <laughs> you're gonna you, you definitely need it after that. Feel free. Three drinks. Yeah, just, like couple, yeah just, just just a couple drink. Drink it slowly. Uh, yeah, doesn't help. All I'm, you're like, your entire throat is burning from the vomit. Mm-hmm. There's definitely something stuck, like right here. It's chunky. It's nasty. It's disgusting. It's yeah. Ugh. Alrighty. I'm gonna have to buy another round for the bar and then head oh, back to I the mean, Rusty Dragon. You, you definitely are. Um, same price as last time. 
was yep. two gold, three gold, or something like that. Three gold. Three gold. Yeah. Alrighty. So you finish up another round. Uh, Solomon, you are quite, quite quickly making friends with everyone in town. Merc. <laughs> You you have you, you sit there for a while and, and you look around and these sailors you're you're used to drawing a lot of death stares, a lot of nasty looks. You're not copying that for any from any of these guys. Um they are just keeping to themselves. As far as as far as they're concerned, you're just another person in a tavern. So yeah, as it's, he's it's done for whatever he, Yeah, he he just, you know, finishes whatever he does, leaves it right there. For sure. And just, you know, slipped out. Yeah, not a worry. And uh as you slip out definitely feel someone you you're used to feeling people watching you. Someone mm-hmm. watching you leave. check over your shoulder and bartender just just watches you leave flashes you a grin winks and you head out yep where are you headed better luck better luck um. <laughs> heading back to the rusty dragon back to the rusty dragon not a problem alrighty so you head back to the rusty dragon uh there's a few, there's a, there's a dozen or so people here. Um, it's still a little early for dinner. It's probably about five-ish. Um, in, in the next half an hour or so, it's going to start getting busier. Um, Amiko does sort of nod as you come in and gesture to a table for you. And she says, I do have to let you know, um, unfortunately, well, less unfortunately, but, um... I have decided to slow roast the boars for the next day and do something a lot more decadent. Tomorrow. Because they were too tough and gamey. I'm I'm definitely going to recount the uh, Varan is is busy working making uh, making shields and spears. You know. oh my. And, and try and work the heroes the same point in there <laughs> oh, somehow. For sure, for sure. What what is he what is he making these uh what's he making these shields and spears for? For for all of you. I think I'll have to hold that piece of information back. That's I see. not ready for public disclosure. I see, I see. A uh secret project then. That one of the heroes of Sandpoint is working on. That's I worse. Just, I just don't think it's my work <laughs> like about it yet. I see, I see. Secret project yeah. it is then. It says, take a seat. <laughs> Order anything you so, like. I uh, I want to know what uh, what they. Th- I want to ask what they know about uh, Varen and his history and and who he is and where he comes from. Okay. Uh, who who are you asking, Amiko? Amiko, yes. <laughs> she grins at you and looks and says, "Honestly, if you can figure any of that out, I will pay you for the story." He is incredibly tight-lipped about his past. He only says he only ever says he comes from out Yanderhof way. Doesn't really say exactly where. Uh, he is a very devout follower of Torag. So I don't really much know the, the tenets of Torag myself, but he seemed, he, he's the leader of their congregation here. Handy with a hammer and uh, takes care of the less fortunate and less amiable, let's say. I'm going to try and start a, start a rumor here. I just want to add to his mysticism because... <laughs> Boy. It just appeals to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think so I'm going to try something. 
Uh, I'm going to ask about the 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 tattoo behind the the birthmark of a tattoo behind his ear that looks like a hammer. Oh, okay. Um, Amiko looks at you, sort of. Go ahead and roll me a bluff check. All right. Yes. I hope I mentioned this before, but he has the holy symbol of Torai tattooed on the back of his head. Yeah. Yeah. You hadn't mentioned it before, but I'm glad you did now. She says, you mean... It's in my description there. You mean... Awesome. You mean mean, uh, the one on the back of his head there? The the large one? It's... As far as I know, it's just a holy symbol of Torag. Do you have hair? Oh, yeah. No. No, I'm bald. Yeah, no, he's bald. Okay, so that's completely bald. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> back of my head. Yeah. That, so Miko looks that, at you confused, like, what are you what are you trying to do here? That if doesn't can, work no, then. Can I? No. Uh I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say yes, since I since I started that, yep. I'm gonna ask if that's what that what that tattoo is about. Uh, as far as I'm aware, it's just the holy symbol of his god. Uh, I can't increase the size of my token to show you that my character is bald, but <laughs> With this. Okay, I'll I'll leave it there because yeah. <laughs> I love I love foot and mouth syndrome. <laughs> player's foot into player's mouth. <laughs> so I, good. <laughs> I, I I probably would have seen that you were bald. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. It's just this that tricks right. you. Oh right. yeah. Oh yeah. It's just. Um, yep. what about the, uh, what about the Amico? Yeah. Who's with us? What do you, what have you figured out about her? Him, her? Who, who are you asking? Amico. Yeah. Who has she figured out about? Oh, hang on, I've asked. Yeah, you've asked Amico about Amico. <laughs> I'm very confused. Who, who do you oh. actually want to ask her about? Toshi. Toshi, right, I understand. Toshi. Mm. <laughs> Yoshi. Yoshi. Toshi is a interesting sort. The name Devrin doesn't fool me. Oh. I know who she is. And she is exactly who she says she is. There is just more to the story than she has outright said to you. And I can't wait to see that unfurl. Right. So you, you think we're a, gr- a good group as the heroes of Sandpoint? I, I haven't absolutely yet- love yeah. every single one of you. <laughs> and I can't wait to see what you do with this town. Do you leave us behind? Do you stay? Is this the extent of your heroism? Is this the end of your journey? Or, and she looks like dead into your eyes. Says the retired adventurer. Or, is this just the beginning? love a good story and she steps away and um begins to talk to other patrons very stolidly ignoring you now just, fair yeah, enough just just for effect <laughs> yeah very All much right. a retired adventurer i mean look <clears throat> what are you mm-hmm. had read the Rise of the Rune Lords Player's Guide. You would know yeah. that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't study it, study it. I no, no, and that's fine, because through. you guys, you guys, the three of you, are new to town. So yeah. you don't know everything. Oren, however, and I know <laughs> Chuck in particular, knows a lot more about her than he probably should. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing that... Oh, no, no, you're fine. No, You're fine. I'm not giving away anything no, no, beyond all. my character's knowledge. Oh no, not so. at all. No, Vorin 100% knows that she's a retired adventurer. She has, she has given, she has given her own stories. 
in fact, part of the the decoration on the um, headboard behind the bar, you do see a rapier with runes down the middle with a quite fantastical filigreed handle. The scabbard nailed just above it in black and gold. Um, and she does, on occasion, not that you guys have seen yet, she can, she can play music. She's very good at it. Mm-hmm. Wasn't she playing the other day, though? She was, As a kind of, but you didn't yeah. really see too much of it. You caught the very, yeah. very tail end of it before. You take a seat. Oh, dear. You have you have dinner. Uh, Toshi, you yes. wake up a couple hours later, unless uh, <laughs> Voron wakes you up earlier. Nope. Nope. You wake up a couple hours later. Feet up on mm-hmm. the couch, and. They're completely numb. Yeah. And <laughs> you try and stand. They practically crumble under you. And you have horrific cramps in the backs of your legs. Just from sitting at that angle and the blood <laughs> rushing back to them. Oh, boy. Don't do that too often. Do you know what that means? Please. Do it more. Mm. <laughs> if she makes a sound, I will come out of the forge. Um, oh, yeah. And you probably go like you probably oh hear <laughs> like uh, bonk. <laughs> and she's just on her side. Ow. I will no, it's grab... it it's like you lift your feet up and you go to stand up and yep. then you go whunk and then nothing else. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah. I'll grab the salt. <laughs> Off the table and some water. Yep. Um, grind some salt into some water, swirl around to try and mix it up and be like, yeah, drink that. Yeah, I know. It tastes horrible. Oh, yeah, it's gross, <laughs> but you need it. Yep. And then I will help her to her feet. Probably a lot less wobbly this time around. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> They're still like you- very, very sore, very, very tender. <laughs> Oh, you're right, Lars. Yeah, shouldn't fall asleep like that too often. Wouldn't say it's good for your legs. But <sighs> it's not wasn't going to tell you what to yeah. do. Uh, you can. Are you okay? Are you okay? Yes. okay. Uh-huh. Right. If I let go, are you going to fall over again? Let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> to very gingerly <laughs> step out from underneath her, holding onto her arm. You're fine. It okay. hurts. But you're okay. I will let, let go. Mm-hmm. A fortitude save. <laughs> uh, yep. I will Good. point to the bread on the table and be like, you should probably eat. Uh, if you need anything, let me know. I'll be working. Okay. Do you know anywhere around town that is quiet? The forest. Um, I don't know what are you looking okay. for in quiet. Never mind. The old lighthouse is quiet. I was about to say. You uh, probably wouldn't if you don't want to, it. If you don't want to leave the town boundary, not that it's a good place to go, but there is the old lighthouse. You probably want to stay away from Chopper's Isle, but there is the old lighthouse. Still Honestly, wouldn't recommend it. I feel like I feel the like lighthouse. It's where all the teenagers go when they're trying to get whatever they want. Like, I'm guessing they have an equivalent to weed <laughs> in uh, setting. Am I wrong in assuming that you are such a teenager? Anyway, uh, <laughs> the next the next quietest place in town that you will find is my laundry room. So, eat no, up. Feel free to stay there. I'm I going mean, to continue working. Depending on depending on how keen you are on that, uh, <laughs> roof of it, roof of, the roof of the cathedral is pretty quiet. But Barnes never going to tell you that. No. I mean, like, I would guess it's pretty obvious, though, as usually the 
um, the temples are quieter, especially mm -hmm. around food time. Yep. Though the roof is an interesting choice. I mean, I assume you want to avoid people. Yeah. Yeah. It is about food time at this point, yes? Uh, yeah, probably about then, yeah. Uh... So she's just going to go to the uh, temple and wait till much later to go get mm. food. Okay, not a problem. The night passes, and you guys don't really see any anything odd or anything like that. Um, get food, quiet night. Boron, you start work. Did you manage to get the math done on that one again? Yep. How much? How many days? Uh, depends on my roles. Yeah. But how many? It's what's the silver? It's 286 silver per day, each for spears and shields. For one of for, each? For one week. For one week. Oh. For... So to get to get the 40 mm -hmm. spears done in one week, yeah. I need a check of 287, 286 oh, okay. silver per day, which I'm not going to do you because can? I don't have that good of a check. I don't have that good of a check yet. Yeah. Uh... So it's going to take me like a month. You can take 10 on no. craft. No. That won't be enough. Okay. Um, you... Oh, maybe with my double, but maybe. I was about to say, you could also increase the DC to half the time it takes mm. as well. Mm -hmm. DC increases by five. Let me check the DC. Uh, I think we said it was like 15. So it's not... Well, it changes for weapon or armor. Actually, no, that's true. I think it was the armor was like 11 or 12 or something. It was it yeah. was very low, and basically if you take 10, you auto-succeed at it. Yeah. It just depends on how much you auto-succeed at it, I guess. Um, See, roll me a knowledge level. Roll, like, roll if I... Just, yeah. Me? Mm-hmm. If I roll and double the DC, mm -hmm. it halves the time it takes to do it. So, so if you double the DC, it halves the time? I thought yep. it just added five to it. Okay. Never mind. Didn't make sense. Um, so, uh, DC for the weapon is 15. DC yep. for the shield is 11. Okay. All right, that's not bad. If you take 10 on the shields, can you auto succeed? Do you have a plus 11 or plus 12 on your craft? Uh no, I have plus 7. Okay. So, my take 10 is 17. All right. So, I don't... fair enough. Well, I auto succeed on both, but I don't You don't double it. Double. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Fair enough. So, you might have to you might just have to take some time. And I'm okay with taking some time. Well, this is yeah. something that I want to do. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay. Not a worry. You you probably don't start forging quite yet. Not no, tonight anyway. Repair materials. But you get everything together. Everything. And, exactly. Yeah. 100%. It's prep work tonight for you. Yeah. Solomon and Merc, you both get a really nice dinner at um, the Rusty Dragon. Amiko... Avoids talking to you for the rest of the night. And yeah. Head off to bed, all of you eventually. Earlier, later, doesn't really matter. Toshi, do you stop by anywhere on the way back to the Rusty Dragon? No, Toshi no. will probably leave the temple at about 11 p.m. Yep. And head back to Rusty Dragon. Yeah, not a problem. Um, You slip in. There's probably... Six or seven people still around. Amiko's still awake. Nods to you. So she will wave and then skitter upstairs. No worries. Uh, not a worry. You head into bed and you all find sleep. How late of a night do you have, Voren? Uh, 
11 o'clock, 11.30. Go to bed. Fair enough. I ain't stupid. No. And Nathan's yelling, <laughs> stop that, Emmer! That's why he's not forging tonight. Yeah. He has done that before. And they nearly burned his house down for it. <laughs> you all find sleep. Wake up the next morning. And... Uh, the three of you in the Rusty Dragon have a note slipped under your front door. No, oh dear. Oh, no. Each of you pick up a note to read. Make sure Vorin makes his way to the Rusty Dragon for dinner tonight. Don't take no for an answer. Amika. <laughs> oh, P.S. You guys are invited too, of course. Toshi sighs. <laughs> Can I sell? Hmm. <laughs> hmm. 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 You guys have the day ahead of you. Do you have any preferences on what you're doing for the day? Boren is obviously working. I was going to say, I'm getting the materials that I'm missing yep. and then starting work on Go for shield it. first. Go ahead and make your um, craft check. That's just the one, isn't it? 19. Yep. I'm sure. Cool. Um, so, work out Again. one. Yep. So, if it's... Yeah, 190. Um, Is this a day's or a week's worth of work? That's a week's worth of work. The check is for a week's worth of work. Right. So, if I divide but that by seven... It's... Gotcha. 190 divided by 7. You work out the math and tell me I mean, how much you yeah. make. And I'll nod and sound like I know what I'm doing. One, one shield. One shield a day. That's not bad. That's not bad. Um, Honestly, I hate smithing shields. Fair. <laughs> the, the, you, you are the three. So she's one hundred percent bothering Vorin and just oh, watching. For sure, of course. And uh, helping out wherever Vorin asks. Vorin, you do not hear a knock at the door. Nope. <laughs> uh, Toshi, My door is never locked, though. Yeah. Because anybody is welcome at any time. And for the most part, you could probably beat to hell anybody who's not loud. Pretty much. Um, Toshi, you do notice that the the forge is in full swing. Pun intended. Uh, and... <laughs> That's right, you intend your puns. Yeah. You are not a weakling. Yeah, no, not at all. Um, and you could pretty easily scale that wall if you want. <laughs> can you not? Stop it. Thank you. It's more of a hop than a skip, isn't it? Over... It's, 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 like, it's, like, a, it's like a seven-foot foot. wall. That's not super um. tall. So she's just going to pop their head over? Yep. Yeah. Vorin, perception check. <laughs> no. No? Just straight up not paying attention. Yeah. Cool. Nope. Gotcha. Vorin is not paying attention. Annoyed face. <laughs> and then Toshi's just going to go through the front door after knocking. Fair. No response to the knock. Head through the front door, straight out, and uh, how long do you reckon it's going to be before Vorin realises she's there? Can I say that I know that she's there and he just ignore her completely? <laughs> yeah, but, but like, you've got to realise at some point, how long before you realise that she's there? You can ignore her. Oh, she's there Stop. for hours before you realise. Yeah. <laughs> Lunchtime. <laughs> it's 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 nearing lunch before you look over and like, how long has she been here? She's on the couch. I... Maybe she's reading something. Like she's having a old oh boy. I don't stop for lunch. No. Okay. Cool. You... I just work through the day. If yep. if I notice that she is there at all, nah. I will ignore nah, the fact that this. she is there 
until no, it's... probably six o'clock yeah. in the evening. Yeah. When I'm like, oh, yeah, I can use a cup of tea. And I yeah. walk into my dad's room. So she's sitting there. And it's like, so hi. What happens at about lunchtime is all of a sudden there's bread, some meat, and some cheese on a plate yep. on your workstation. I didn't look at it. <laughs> it's there, though. Just... Cheese is getting warm. So and then uh, when all six o'clock tools... rolls around, <laughs> all of your tools will are slightly the... organized better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. Who's touching my tools while I'm working? That's not okay. Uh, Who's touching my tools while I'm working? <laughs> so it's more of, hey, this one's out of whack. I'm just gonna align this to the rest of them. <laughs> so not the tools that I'm using that I have laid out next to me, just the tools that are on the wall, right? Yeah. Like this one's off kilter just slightly enough to be annoying. <laughs> but not the ones that are next to me that I have set out in a specific way. Oh no. Okay. So she at least knows forge safety. Then I'm just I won't notice yeah. until <laughs> until I intend to stop at six o'clock and I go, who put it up there? What the f- what is this? I grab a piece of bread off the plate. It's standing and as fun. that's fine. I'm not I'm used to that. Yeah, yeah, you are. I'm sure you are. Uh walk into my lounge room, piece of bread hanging out of my mouth, put the oh. kettle on and look around the lounge room and go, Oh. Yeah, you would have had to walk Hello. past Toshi. You didn't notice right. her on the way past. You only notice no. as you turn around and look at the at the rest of the room. So yeah. you watch him walk past. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm assuming thank you for the food. I at least tried to get you to stop, but I don't think you noticed me. I. <laughs> Some say that when you are in your field, when you are in your space, you actually transfer into a separate realm of being. Does it's dangerous. Just sit up your I will admit. Uh, however, when I am forging, I feel like I am in the great halls of Torag, forging alongside him. And often the outer world cannot affect that. I am sorry for my uh, impoliteness in ignoring you. I did not mean any offense by it. Um, I hope that you are well and that you have found yourself at home. Uh, My home is your home, as it always has been. Honestly, it's just nice to have somebody around instead of just sitting in my room all day and doing nothing. Right. Well, like I said, please feel free to be at home. My abode is, by extension, yours. Anybody is welcome. Uh, I'm sorry again for my rudeness of ignoring you. Uh, you were not rude. You were working. Honestly, still. I was the impolite one by entering without letting you know first. Well, that's why the door's unlocked. <laughs> oh. I'm sure you knocked. I just didn't hear it over the hammering. Yes, do be careful about Faye, then. Anybody foolish enough to enter the forge with ill intent will wear the Wrath of Torag, not just my own. That's always good. The Faye are just annoying, though. Yes, but, uh, I'm sorry again about my impoliteness. Uh, as always, you are welcome. You are safe here. Feel at home. Stop saying sorry. You don't need to. I apologize, but I have to get back to work. <laughs> and we'll be back. Okay. Just make sure your tools don't go off kilter. I cannot promise against Torag's work. <laughs> Toshi, you do remember the note in the that you got at the morning? It says, don't take no yep. for an answer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> also, um, you have an invitation, and it's one that you can't refuse. <laughs> and hands 
hands <laughs> floor in the note. <laughs> I can offer you can't refuse. I don't, I don't wish to be rude. But I may have started something in the town that I need to be able to follow through with and protect the people that I guided. If Amiko really wishes for my presence, really truly wishes for my presence, she is going to have to do more than convince what is possibly a friend, possibly, to tell me otherwise. I have a lot of work to do. I owe you Torag this. I need to protect those that I set upon this path. I, I cannot do that by going to frivolous dinners where I'm called out for being something that I am not, someone that, someone that I am not. Uh, I'm not a hero of Sandboy. And she does need to realize that. I am just the humble, dwarven father looking to protect his town and protect his people and one day hopefully join the tolls the halls of and forges of torag uh in my craftsmanship sorry but amigo can wait just remember though you might not like it if you spend your life working even through your god it's enjoy your life enjoy what has been given to you at this point and makes not exactly make something out of it just oh. enjoy it i don't i don't know i don't know that toshi is a fox of any kind do i nope no. You probably heard a few interesting rumors about a black fox scene around town. Yeah, okay. But that's perfect. Uh, I am going to say, well, young soul, uh, I enjoy my work. And I know something of not enjoying the place that you are. Uh, I enjoy where I am and I enjoy what I do in my service. So they appreciate the concern, but. I will continue my work. I will get her to come over and make you leave. You know that, right? Life at a forge. You can try. Yeah. Life at a forge is a life well lived in the service oh, of roll, Dorag. Roll me a sense of motive, Toshi. Okay. Uh, let's hope I get a good one. <laughs> Please get a horrible one. No. 17. Mm. That's not too bad. He truly believes everything he's saying. And nothing, you get the distinct feeling that nothing you say is going to change his mind. No, nothing of course not. He's being stubborn. He is. <laughs> he is. Pig headed, some would say. <laughs> I'm well acquainted with this good of him. <laughs> An iron skull for a dwarf is always a good trait. This is true. But always a difficult one for a friend. Certainly. Well, at least try to get you dinner. You better eat it while it's still warm. Uh, you were more than gracious enough to bring me meat and bread and cheese, so... Meat's cold. That's fine. <laughs> While I may have missed that lunch, it will do as a dinner. I appreciate it, and I appreciate you. Please go and enjoy yourself, young one. Uh, you have many a life to live before you're my age. Well, living many lives is a bit of an irony. Anyway, I'll see you there. Bye. Or oh, you won't. <laughs> Toshi will leave Ray. right before he says anything else. <laughs> She's going to raise my cup of tea. I will say it whether she's oh, yeah. leaving or not. Oh, yeah. Or you won't. Raise my cup of tea down and go back to the porch. Uh, Are you working through the night? Only until about 10 o'clock. And then I need rest. I do need that. I know that I will 
work till then. Do that you... I'm. Do I what? I'm going to open this up to you. It's going to be an option. Have okay. you had any dealings with an arcane caster of some kind, any kind, in Sandpoint since you've been here? Feels like a trick question, but I'm um, sure I possibly up have something. Possibly have? What, Why? To, what, to what degree? Well, they would have met one in passing in the tavern, or okay. one would have stuck their head into the, my congregation out of curiosity, depending on what okay. type of arcane castle they are. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit concerned. Me? I bet it's a, I, no, I bet it's a Bernie meme. <laughs> it's probably is a Bernie meme, yeah. She um, is obsessed with Bernie memes at the moment, so oh God. that's probably what she was laughing at. I love them; that's so good. Uh, okay, yeah, no, okay, no, not an issue then. Um, never mind. Okay, I wouldn't have taken the time to personally get to know somebody just because they're an arcane caster. No, no, I just thought I was just wondering if you had worked with one before or not anything. No. Okay, that's not good. All right, Toshi. Unless, unless one specifically asked to yeah, no. work with me, nope. no, I wouldn't. Uh, you head back to the Rusty Dragon. Merc, what are you doing all day? Um, he's actually just chilling out the Rusty Dragon, just you know, keeping to himself. Yep. Not not gonna cause any trouble yet. <laughs> yet. Oh boy. Just wait until I get casting. <laughs> um, what about you, Solomon? Uh, so we got given the horses by... Um, yep, and I assume we, he at least boarded them when, uh, when we got back to town. I'd go check in on the horses and, yeah. and room the four of them, etc. because I don't think my compatriots are doing that. Um, spend the day taking care of them. Uh, I want to also get to know the people around uh, in that area, who's traveling in and out of town, um, any stories, any news, anything that's happening. Um, I also sent you a direct message, which you might want to read. Ah, okay. Uh, Who Discord. are you robbing and why? Oh, that's never good. Who are you robbing? <laughs> dun dun dun. Oh, hello, there you go. I'm here to dupe. Yep. Uh oh. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, dust mode. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Okay, Alrighty. so yeah, not, so, not a problem. Um, Your horses are taken care of, they are all boarded, and there is a uh stable master and a groom there. It's probably, probably two grooms. Um, It's probably. Probably the only stable in town. Um, so yeah, yep. so they're well taken care of, kind of thing. Okay. Um, so you head back to the, the, the rusty drag in at some point. That that would be. Uh, so did I get any news about any goings on from being there and maybe um, talking people? Except? What uh, what are you trying? What are you listening for? Stories uh, and that sort of stuff. Things that are things that are happening in the wider world so outside of standpoint just as it's a it's it's a hub so i'm likely to hear of you know uh, giants and monsters yeah. and etc are you going out of your way to ask people about this subtly not to okay. make everyone think go that ahead. i'm out yeah not a problem go ahead and roll me a diplomacy check Let me see. Dun, dun, dun. as a gather information roll 20 all right so you're asking specifically about giants? Um, I would be leaning towards giants. Yep. Yep. Anything else in particular? Anything that's uh, Out of the anything that's kind of thing? That new and different. Anything that's changed uh, is unusual. Okay. Um. So specifically, giants. If... Oh, yo. Back on the continent. 
Back up. Wow, this is pretty. Is it just the black screen? No, there is some unlocked there. Yeah, good. Um, that that wasn't sarcasm. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, are each of us seeing the exact same thing, or you should all be seeing the same thing? Yes. If you zoom out, Ooh. and then zoom back in in the right spot, yeah. So, what you hear is about giants possibly on the move around the Malgorian Mountains, so just here, and in the Sanos Forest, which, from what you can tell, is a little bit further east than they should be. Usually, and you know that they hang around in the Ashwood Forest. Um, usually, you know they don't. They don't really cross that river there. A little bit further west than they should be. Yes, that west. Mm -hmm. Yep. Look. <laughs> okay. Yes, a little yeah, bit further west. So you read next. Good one. Yeah, a little bit further okay. west than that should be. Yeah. That that's great news for me. Uh, would I have heard of anything that anyone? Does anyone have any guesses as to why? Um, everyone has guesses. None of them seem to fit what you know of giants, though. Cool. Awesome. So you, uh, like, they all I, have they all have a reason for it, but you know that that's not right. It doesn't seem right. That's not what they're about, kind of thing. Like hunting, um, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah. Cool. So that's what I would have done for the day, and I would go back to the Rusty Dragon as well. Yeah, not a worry. Um, so by the end of the day, you're all back in the Rusty Dragon, and except, except for Goran. And Toshi, as you arrive, um, you have a word with Amiko and say, probably say something along the lines of, look, I tried, I couldn't get him to come. Something like that? Yeah. All right. Tried, you're going to probably have to talk to him. Yeah. Amiko nods and says ah well his loss it's no great i just i like having him around for some reason i don't really know why i like Varen. he's a positive yeah, force like, for good but does Varen like you i i i <laughs> would hope that Varen, Varen likes, likes everybody i think it's because he isn't as chaotic as many here <laughs> she she goes to say something she's like I resemble that remark <laughs> and she just sort of checks her fingernails and says how dare you call me out like that <laughs> hey I fall into that category too that is I fair. bet you heard about me trying to find who gave me the jewelry box I did amazing <sighs> fantastic I'm definitely going to tell other people about that. In any case, yeah. dinner is for you three, since Warren isn't joining us. Dinner is on the house. You were the ones who provided it. Um, Alden did say that... Sorry, go on. What were you going to say? say that I love how the other two didn't even try. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, eh, there's no chance. <laughs> Um, so, well, I mean, they may have, they may have ducked by your house, walked in, saw Toshi there, it's like, oh, okay, and then walked out. <laughs> She's got this. Or to Who knows? Or they knocked on the door, Toshi answered, went, I'm trying. I'm trying. Look, <laughs> look. He hasn't noticed me. It's been seven hours. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Something like that, for sure. I've walked um, in front of him like seven times at this point. 
<clears throat> yeah, and look, yeah, look. I'm a little bit involved in my life. <laughs> I think I think the correct word is obsessed. In any case, yeah. You begin dinner, and um, Amiko does say uh, Alden does send his apologies. He was unable to make it tonight. Uh, he apparently got called back to Magnamar for uh, for some reason or other. He didn't really tell me what was happening or anything like that, so he just told me to apologize to Voron. And by Voron, I assume he meant the rest of you. <laughs> that was more Voron. What a day. What a day. Uh, honestly, I think he was infatuated with Voron. Infatuated? What makes you say that? No, he's more obsessed. Obsessed? What happened? <laughs> I said nothing. Tosh will give Amiko a wink and go up to her room. Mm-hmm. Um, there is, there is, like, you have a meal in front of you. Oh yeah, Tosh yeah. has already eaten it. Oh, gone. Like... Okay, Just... that's <laughs> fine. Uh, eaten when nobody was looking, like entirely. I mean, I, I... it's a little <laughs> look. I mean, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, it's it's quite a large meal. I'm going to say that you probably haven't, just because of the size it is, and it's been, like, five seconds. Okay, it's been, five it's been seconds. maybe, like, ten to fifteen was, seconds. It's like... Uh, I was thinking it'd been a few minutes. No, 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 no. It's only, it's only like, she's literally just sat it down in front of you guys. Feel oh. free. He's made his apologies. What happened? Like, fifteen second conversation. Um, and during this 15 second conversation, or just after, I... as you're eating, um, <laughs> you hear a commotion from outside and the tavern door slams open. And as you all look, because, you know, in- instinct demands that you look. A rather tall, male-sounding, sort of silhouetted (laughs) in the thing. You see quite large, pointed ears, just bellows a command in some kind of language that you don't recognize. Um, Not even I? No. You, however, can roll me knowledge and ability. Okay. Skills. Knowledge and ability. 21. 21? Nice. This is in fact Lonjiku Kaijitsu, Amigo's father. Um, do you speak, do you speak Minkayan? No, I do not. You don't understand what he says. But he barks out some kind of order. He storms in, and the bar goes dead silent. What were we going to say, Rath? Uh, uh, probably it sounds like very, uh, like, angry. Because, you know, sometimes, it's like, oh, yeah. oh, it's just, it might, might why you, like, you know, how the voice is. You know, angry? It's how they say something. Yeah. Yeah. Angry, Wait. sharp, and it is a command. Like, there is an air of authority behind this. You guys, do we say anything? He he he's heading into he's walking in, and he's heading probably towards the kitchen. It's Amiko's father, correct? So uh, sorry. Yes, it is. Uh, do I know Elvish? I better know Elvish. <laughs> in any do. case, Wonderful. as he's so he he reaches behind he he reaches the door to the kitchen. And, um... What do I know about them? About the kaijutsus themselves? Yes. They are glassblowers and jewellers, and they were one of the founding families of Sandpoint, the town proper. Um... He... He walks into the kitchen. Mm -hmm. 
And Toshi will he walks be... back out. Amiko is nowhere to be seen at this point. You were saying? I was just going to see about like following slightly behind, yep. just like curiosity. Yeah. Um. So he turns out, and you're practically right in his face there. Um, oh no, I wasn't going to be like that. Was... Oh right, right. So like you're you're standing there heading towards him as he comes out. So maybe mm-hmm. maybe 10, 15, 10, 15 feet away. It's kind of he notices you. Would I have known about any family issues? From rumor or the like, with with that, huh. you would know that there are three living members of this family that you that you're aware of. Mm-hmm. Um, Longiko, Longiku, Amiko, and Suto. Suto is Amiko's half brother. He is not Lonjiku's son. Okay. He is a half elf. Mm hmm. Whereas Lonjiku is full elf. Interesting. Um, yeah. So that's a thing that you know. <laughs> Uh, mm-hmm. As Longiku walks back out of the kitchen, he notices you and looks over at Merc and Solomon, and you see just an absolute look of disgust on his face. And he walks over to you and just screams in your face, How dare you and your useless compatriots call yourselves heroes? You are nothing but glorified adventurers that are that endanger townsfolk with your ill-advised antics against the goblins you should have left the defense of the town to the city guard and other trained professionals Toshi no expression changes because would I know that anything like militaristic about the family no not at all And that's coming from you. Just barks and says, I didn't stick my nose where it didn't belong. It's just what we need. Self-defense is... A filthy... And he shouts over you at this point. A filthy band of vagrants to attract even more trouble to the town. He just pushes you aside. Militaristically trained. (laughs) He pushes you aside. And Amiko comes down from upstairs and she looks and she sees her father there and you see, you, you hear her say a word in the same language that Lonjiku was speaking before and the rapier from off above the headboard appears in her hand. She says, you... Father, we'll leave this establishment under your own feet. Otherwise, I will make you leave myself. He walks past you and up to Amiko and says, um, How dare you presume to give me orders? And he reaches forward and he just grabs her by the hair and drags, starts dragging her behind him. At this point, and... Toshi takes a dagger out of her sleeve and goes, stop, immediately. He says, sit down and shut up. He you stra- first. Drags, drags her by the hair. So and she's going to stand in front she, of him. She, Amiko, with the rapier, cuts her hair. Mm-hmm. And uh, Longiko uh, just spews out a string of a language that you don't understand. And Lonjiku turns around. You see his eyes just go dead cold. No expression. Looks her dead in the eye and says, it's quite low. This is the quietest you've heard him speak. He says, you're as dead to me as your mother. 
and walks out. You look at Amiko, and she's okay. shaking. Not from fear. And as her hair is everywhere, just all over the floor. She um, walks behind the bar, puts the sword back up. And... doesn't say a word do we think she was proud of her hair or is it just uh roll me a sense motive would i be able to know that from elvish culture uh go ahead and sense motive uh actually Um, knowledge history yes history am i proficient in history I am. 20. Uh, not particularly proud of her hair or anything like that. Um, it was, I mean, you know, not, not, not particularly proud of it but for any, you know, for any reason. No cultural ties no, to it. No, okay. no, no, no cultural ties, not at all. Um, Solomon, you, you get the distinct sense that she's, kind of cold she might might be coming down with a with a with a flu or something uh, in any case the entire bar is still dead silent she uh takes down takes down her instrument and she plays for the first time since sort of that, that you might have um, really heard her play properly. It's a three-stringed instrument. She plays, and it's a slow melody, melancholy, kind of sad, um, but defiant in in the same way. Mm-hmm. How full is the bar? Uh, there's, there's like it. This is right smack bang in the middle of dinner. Uh, so <laughs> pretty full. Probably only maybe five or six empty chairs out of a tavern room that usually holds upwards of forty people. So she's gonna put away their dagger. <laughs> Yep. And probably stay near Amiko for the rest of the night. Yeah, she's sort of just sitting behind the bar, feet up on the bar, just playing. And um, everyone sort of looks a little lost for a good five minutes and decides to let's just ignore that that happened. Um, they don't. It's it, they don't go back to what they were doing. They talk quietly and softly to each other, and, um, yeah. It's, it's a subdued, it's the most subdued you've ever heard the Rusty Dragon. People usually tend to stay around after dinner for a couple drinks. Most people, as soon as they finish dinner, they leave. Around about... Six o'clock, Amiko staff, uh, the, uh, the the servers, they've been taking taking up the slack. Um, that ran about six, uh, seven o'clock. Sorry, bar's empty except for you guys and Amiko. Amiko does um, pull over one of the one uh, younger younger man. Who seems to take? Who seemed to take charge? And she just says, "Thank you. You can all go home now. I'll take care of the rest." And he nods, and the rest of them head out. So it's just you and Amiko left. She stands, puts her uh, 
Samus in. Back up above the bar. And heads towards the stairs. Upstairs is where all the rooms are, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Though she will follow closely behind. <laughs> okay. Um, she turns and she smiles at you and says, Can I help you, Toshi? It seems like you need more help then. <laughs> this isn't this isn't the first time that my father has burst in here demanding that I give up everything I've built and return to the family business. I'm sure it won't be the last. I'll be fine. Just Haven't you thought about stabbing him at least once? Not to kill, just to remind him that it is your establishment. He's... He's still my father. Bound by blood and nothing else. I don't I don't owe him any animosity. Well I didn't uh, before he said what he said. I just need some time alone. I can make you some tea and then leave you alone. <laughs> I have a half kitchen up in my room. I'll be fine. Thank you for your concern. I do appreciate it. This is the most lifelike she has ever been. The most herself. Mm -hmm. She's pretty much always putting on a face. Putting on a face of some kind. Either a performance or loudly proclaiming you the heroes of Sandpoint. <laughs> she instead is a little bit raw. And she just wants some time alone. Mm -hmm. She um, reaches out and I... she puts, puts her hand on your shoulder. Mm -hmm. Takes a deep breath and sighs. Leans in a little. You know, if you weren't already married, it might be a different story. Grins <laughs> and heads upstairs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she catches your eye, Merc. <laughs> winks, nods to Solomon as she's heading upstairs. You see her disappear from sight quite quickly, and you're left alone in the Rusty Dragon. The three of you. Yeah, I I hit it. I like finish my drink and head up toward the my room. I'm going to lock up the, uh, the the doors if I can. Um, yeah. And I think I will spend the night outside um, just wandering around the Rusty Dragon. I don't know who that was. I don't know what that was about. Yep. But if it was that violent, I would be concerned about Amiko having some intruder during the night or so on and so forth, even though it's a dad and... The whole, you're dead to me is as good as I'm going to kill you, so I'm just going to be awake and 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 watch the area. Uh, I don't think I can go and call one of the town guards because they're probably not going to really get involved there. And I don't think I can do anything either, so if anything happened, I would just try to break a window, wake up Miko to deal with it, but she just needs to sleep. Yeah. I mean, cool. Yeah. Are you staying up the whole night? Yeah. Okay. Not gonna ask the other two about possibly taking watch with you or anything like that. That is a possibility. I think Roth already headed up, and uh, think, yeah. No, I th I think it it would be my character wanna, just being concerned and, and okay. Cool. Yeah, going going cool. logically, it's nothing, but illogically, I don't want to sleep with okay. that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. not a worry. An hour or two later, uh, Miko does get a scratching at a door from a black fox. Okay. Mm -hmm. hmm. 
Um. <laughs> You hear her call out. I'm fine, Toshi. Go to bed. <laughs> Fox form yelps. Like, yeah, so, but <laughs> just a yelp. Fox yelp. <laughs> and then pat herself to bed. Oh, not a problem. Curl up on, on the bed in Fox form. Underneath the sheets. Underneath the sheets. Oh, for sure. 100%. <laughs> As you do. Wait, I could just make a little nest under the bed. <laughs> Such a great idea. Yes. Try so, to send your assassins after that now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so. You all find sleep, with the exception of Solomon who stays up and patrols throughout the night. Um, go ahead and mark fatigued. Actually, would it be fatigued or exhausted? I believe it's fatigued. Fatigued, yeah. Fatigued, fatigued. as a yeah. as a condition on your sheet. Um, oh, and uh, oh. you will keep that as a condition until you take a full night's rest. If he takes another night without rest, he gets exhausted. Exhausted, yeah. No worry. Okay. Sleep comes, the morning comes, you all wake up the next day, and the staff, Toll, you, uh, not Toll, uh, Solomon, you notice the staff arrive early in the morning, and the door is locked, unless you didn't leave it locked for yourself to get back in? Uh, I don't know if it has a key. I, I assume I didn't have one, so I yeah, would have just... Yeah, I would have just done something, whatever I could have, to, to, to close it, but I, I imagine they okay. could easily just push it it's open just, or whatever. It's just closed. Um, so they, yeah. they open up. They, they, they open the door and uh, head on in. And that's probably equivalent of like 4 a.m. Voron, you wake up the next morning after mm. having slept very soundly with no knowledge of what happened the night before. Exactly. Um, am I assuming you are getting straight back to work? Correct. I'll have breakfast. I'll make myself some breakfast. Mm -hmm. And some tea, and then I'll get back to work. Yeah, not a worry. Uh, Merc, what are you doing first thing in the morning? Well, waking up... Um... He washes his face, put on some decent clothes, like, you know, some clean clothing. Yep. And uh, he just, like, with his, with the weapon on the side, he just heads down to see what's going on. Okay. Um, there's a few people around. Um, you don't see Miko anywhere. People are mm. being served breakfast, and... The first time that you've seen the um uh what is the words I'm looking for? The kitchen is manned rather than everything moving on its own. Hmm. So she will knock on Amiko's door. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Amiko comes to the door. She's not dressed. Um, she does, however, have seem seem to have spent some time trying to tidy her hair up. Um, she's not quite finished yet. She's got a dagger in her hand. And she's going to help you, Toshi. Uh, just making sure that you're up. I'm up. I have spoken to my head server downstairs, and uh, he is going to take on the uh, 
responsibility of running the tavern for the day. To be honest, I really should have put this in his hands a long time ago, but I enjoy it, so that's why I haven't. Uh, in any case. Uh... Jeez. The words have fun. More Bernie memes, probably. <laughs> um... But, yeah, so she says, I'm going to take the day off, basically. She says, if there's anything you need, ask the server downstairs. I mean, I could help you with your hair if you wanted. <clears throat> um, I'm not going to argue with you. I feel like I'm making an absolute mess of it. So, uh, um, sure. Let me help. Yeah. So she, yeah, she opens she opens the door a bit wider <laughs> and she, Wow, okay. Invites you in. Invites you into her room. Yeah. You look around, it's not quite Spartan, but for someone mm-hmm. with her uh personality, we'll say. It seems way too sparse. There is a very comfortable bed. There is a half kitchen. There is a uh, mirror and a bureau on the wall. Um, honestly, not much else. Not even a rug. Hmm. It's quite plain. Dude, Mish is adventuring. <laughs> I... I don't. But I do. But I don't. I well, made the I choice to retire. Capacity. Uh, I I miss the freedom of adventuring. I don't miss the danger. You wish to travel again? Not for a long time. If I can help <laughs> it. I'm quite happy sitting here, running my tavern. Your room says otherwise. I'm not here very often. I'm here to sleep. My personality is downstairs. <laughs> That's where I put my energy. That's where I put my focus. That's where... No one else is going to see this. Why does it need to be pretty? Well, somebody else might see it one day. You see, you see a sly grin. Uh, haven't heard any complaints except for yours. Well, that's because you need to let more people in. I tend to let in people who deserve it, and people who I feel are good and kind. <laughs> you, however... You're offering to help. I can't cut my own hair. <laughs> and she hands you the dagger and says, do what you like. What okay. hairstyle do you give Amiko Kaijutsu? Pixie. Pixie cut. Actually, how much was cut off? Um, so it was sort of on the side kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Like, 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 like here. And mm-hmm. it's probably about uh, an inch and a half. Yeah. Or basically like that. Uh, the rest of her so hair is quite her long. Under- Undercut. Okay, cool. Alright. What do you do what do you do with the top? Um probably fix up any of the ends yeah. that aren't completely lined. Yeah, definitely. It, it's it is a little ratty because it was like a whole handful of hair and was just cut off. It's a bit ratty, like there's some up here. So you give her a full undercut, and she looks and she says, "Huh, interesting." Yeah, give me that. My wife tried to give me this one time. I did not like it. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, she says, "Here, give me give me the dagger," and she like grabs and wraps and pulls and cuts. A lot of it off, and then she just sort of flips it over to flips it over to one side. Think like like V from Cyberpunk, mm-hmm. except it sort of ends around about eye level. It's not like down shoulder level. It's it's like eye level. Mm. So it's like yeah. the whole the sweep, bowhawk kind of 
kind of look. And there we go. Yeah. Just, you could just tidy up the ends there, so not an issue. You tidy it up, thin it out a little bit. Looks real good. It's, uh... Suits her. Weirdly. Different. Like, weirdly suits her. <laughs> yep. Yep. Okay. says, well... Huh. I like it. A lot more uh, practical than I had it before, and... Oh man, I'm not going to hear the end of this for a few weeks. Long hair usually gets in the way, that's why really... You're not wrong. <laughs> Toshi is staying with very long hair. Yeah. That has not been done this morning. Oh yeah. Only brushed. It's a <laughs> bit of a mess. No, it's um, not a mess, it's been brushed Been down. brushed, been it... brushed. For sure. Yeah. Um, mine's still a mess after I brush it sometimes. Ooh. It says... <laughs> She looks at she looks you dead in the eye through the mirror. Mm-hmm. She says, uh, "Thank you for the uh, interest. Thank you for the interest and the care. Mm-hmm. I appreciate it." Yes. Now. Though my familiar may be back around uh, soon, though. Say again, sorry. My familiar might be back around soon, though. You're familiar. Hmm. And she just looks at you with this knowing grin. She's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> sure. You're familiar. Of course. If you really already know, then you better not start t- telling people. That'll just complicate that things on my end. Is not my secret to tell. However, if you are to trust the people that you are a lot of time with, they might need to know sooner rather than later who you are. Get the feeling well, that they the thing don't. Is, well, they... Having an ability like this it lends itself to be distrusted, and I'd much rather not have that with people that I've just met. I understand. If I can... As with our... Hmm? Go ahead. Oh no, you go. If I can offer a bit of a uh, soothing piece of advice, you can trust Foreign. The good man. <laughs> I know he hates me calling him a hero, but if anyone is going to be of the like the heroes of old, it's that man. <laughs> May he like it or not, he has already written his own book. Surely has. You can trust him. I trust him. <laughs> Thank you for the help, Toshi. You will appreciate it. You should go get some breakfast. I'm sure you're hungry. She stands and leads I... you to the door. Okay. I better see this room more furnished the next time I come in. You won't. And she pushes you out the door, closes the door behind you. What is it with people being so stubborn in decoration? <laughs> you do hear a laugh from the other side of the door. Like, seriously, does nobody have panache about their room? <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> Clearly not. <laughs> I mean, have you seen my walls? Come on. <laughs> I'm assuming you head back downstairs. You need to have some... Sorry? Yeah. You need some aesthetic. Look, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> no, he's not. I, have... I am. <laughs> I have an idea. Look. I'm going to roll sense motive IRL. Um, here's my d20. My sen- IRL sense motive. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Roll it a three. He's not. He's not even... <laughs> I have an idea. Yeah, remind 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 me to put a remind me to put a uh, a photo of my of like my desk and the whole setup I've got like that I look at. (laughs) It's nice. I like it. It's it's not that glorious. It's nice. It could be better. It's much better than mine, which is just an incredibly messy desk. Oh oh no! I I definitely have an incredibly messy desk for sure. Mine's worse. Played mine today. I need to clean mine. Where's my chunky? 
Can I just okay. interject for a moment here? Yes. I, A, forgot to double my crowd check. Of course you did. For is. being in town. So you did too. Even though, even though it's... No, actually, I've worked it out. Mm-hmm. I did okay. seven. Nice. Seven shields that day. Solid effort. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. a lot. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really good. Sure, being these out quick. Wow. Oh. And on that terrible pun, we are going to take a break for a good uh, 10 to 15 minutes. And we will be back very shortly. Bear with us. And someone remind (laughs) me to make sure that these guys are actually being able to be heard when we do get back. Thanks. We'll see you soon. You can hear me? Shit.
And welcome back, everybody. Um, so, last we left off. No, thank you. Hopefully yeah. that should work now. Okay. I, oh. every, every time I swap between scenes in Streamlabs, it just mutes you all for some reason. So... You all just need to keep on top of that one for me because I, I don't know how to stop it doing that for some reason. Yeah. But Not sure. it's working now by the looks. By the looks? If, That's good. Let's if, go. you guys, if you guys in chat can't hear them, let me know as soon as possible. Um, anyway, last we left off. Not last we left off, but before the break. Um, where were we? Um, Though she had just finished cutting Amiko's hair, Voren was continuing yeah. on with forging. I actually well. have something Toshi wanted to do, but I'll wait till after everyone's done because I already did a thing. Oh. Rath, um, what is Merc doing? Um, he's actually uh, like, what time of the day is it? Right? Uh, it's probably how early do you usually wake up? Well, probably around like nine or ten in the morning. I just okay. wanted to make sure if it was morning, lunch, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So it's probably around about that ten o'clock mark, mid morning. Okay. Yep. He comes downstairs and see if he can grab something to snack on before he heads out and walks through the town. Yeah, for sure. Not a worry. Um, super easy. You are just given food. Um, it's bread and cheese at the moment, just nothing too crazy. They are setting up for lunch in the next hour or two. Um, mm. Yeah. Where are you headed in town? Um, he's just walking through. He's just going into the northern part of the town, just looking around. Yeah, yeah not a worry. Um, you do walk past the jail and the, uh, the barracks, the guards' barracks, on um, mm -hmm. the left and... On the, on the right and left, respectively. Um, you continue up, and you find yourself probably right on the edge of the cliffs here, overlooking a small beach and a um, very calm inlet. So, yeah, he's... He's probably gonna just walks to the beach and yeah. just like sits like sits down and looks around. Yeah, fair enough. It it's it's like a real gravelly sort of yellow rocky kind of sand. It's not super nice, but it's not nasty either. Um so yeah, you head out head out sort of yell you, you have to climb down sort of along the side of the old light there. And yeah, mm -hmm. super super easy. Head down to the beach. Um, there's no one else really around. Most people don't tend to, um, find themselves on the beach, so far as you can tell. <laughs> you just sit there most of the day? Um, he's, um, uh, just sitting there for, you know, just quietly, just, you know, spending some time to himself. Mm -hmm. Not, like, stuck up in the end, just actually getting some breathing room. Yeah, not a worry. All good. Um, let me know if there's anything in particular that you want to accomplish throughout the day. I'm more than happy to, yeah, do some stuff. Yeah. Solomon. What are you doing? Uh, I think I would have stayed awake until about Six o'clock, so a couple of hours after the staff mm -hmm. walked in, yep. gone in, grabbed some food, gone up, gone to sleep. Um, and I probably would sleep until two or three in the afternoon, so you know, get a yeah. full night's sleep, full, full eight hours, yeah, for sure. And uh, then afterwards, I was thinking maybe I'd take my horse for a ride. Um, yep. and I was gonna just find out from the stablery where they recommend. If there's yeah. anywhere interesting and safe for me to go for a ride and come back, and, and that's going to be my day. Yeah, no, fair enough. Um, so they they do say uh, <laughs> safe is, uh, let's say, relative in Verissia. 
Um, they do recommend you don't head too close to the Tickwood or Shankswood, or Shankswood by yourself, as there are bears and stuff like that in, in the woods. Um, they do said they do say take the road down out south out to the to the south, and uh, yeah, possibly. Maybe check out the the pyre there. It's an interesting view, and uh, on a clear day, you can see the dragon's punch bowl from up there. That would be fun. West. West, yes, thank you. South and then west. Uh, If I I see anything that I think is going to cause me any trouble, I'm just going to turn right around and come back. But if I make it all the way out to the pyre, uh, what would I perceive? Yeah, um, so go ahead and roll me a perception check. Yeah, so it it is in fact a clear day, and you look out, and you, you can just see, just on the horizon, just a very small uh, mountain, just, just sticking out of the, um, just sticking out of the ocean there. And as you look a little closer, it looks like the top's been just cut off. Hmm. Interesting place. Yeah. It's a fair way out. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll return to Sandpoint. Along the way, I might look for any interesting herbs or plants or anything that can flavor dinner. But um, if I know anything about the local flora and fauna... Yeah, go ahead and roll me a survival check, please. I um, pick a poisonous berry. <laughs> Actually, hey, these purplish berries next to this river look very good and tasty. I should probably have a few. You, you. <laughs> it's a bad idea. Don't do that. <laughs> um, I'm bad idea. So if it looks like a blueberry. It's probably not a blueberry. Very true. Uh, on on, on your way back, like about halfway, about halfway back, you uh, you notice like a small, just out of the corner of your eye, like a flash of color, and you head over and um, you see a bush with uh, blue flowers and red thorns. That. That sounds unusual enough for me to say, no. <laughs> Leave that alone and then just head back to town. Blue flowers, red thorns. Um, blue flowers, red thorns. Blue flowers, red thorns. Blue blue flowers, red thorns. Red thorns. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, so I'll, 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 I'll remember it. I'll remember it because it obviously stands out to me. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and I might ask, uh, I might ask, one of the party when we get back to town. Hey, what's this? Or, um, but do my best to, to describe it, but I'll stay yeah, away yeah. from it. It's Blue flowers, different. red thorns. <laughs> cool. Uh, cool. So yeah, you, you head back, you get back into town. It's uh, getting dark. So you probably hustle a little bit on the way back. Um, but yeah, no issues at all. Um, Lauren, have you done... Do you need to do craft checks for, for this day? Or is it just seven a day for the week? Depends on how you want to run it. I, can't, I kind of want to do craft checks per day to, to, to okay. see how many you make that day. Yeah, Like, it is a quote-unquote weekly um, thing. It's a weekly check by raw, but we can do it by day and then just divide the number by seven. I, li- I like that. Yeah, let's do that. It's a little bit homebrewy, but I, it feels better. All right, so go ahead and do the math for that one there. So, um, um, I think it's probably, 15, I was about to say, I think, I think it's going to be like six, five, five. five. It's five so point more than five. So if we round it down, round six. it down to five. <laughs> yeah, um, all right, Toshi, you uh, said you you said you had something that you wanted to do. Yes, Toshi's going to bother Voren. Again? <laughs> Is she just? 
yes, Toshi is going to go and bother Vorin because mm-hmm. Toshi wishes Vorin was there last night for a bit of backup. Yeah. So Vorin at about like eight AM you hear on the door. <laughs> oh my God. Would you have started forging by eight AM? Oh you don't yes, hear anyway. No, <laughs> there's no way he there's no way you hear. Door opens a little bit, Toshi slips in, door closes. Yep. Toshi's not gonna get in the way, but makes herself as visible as possible. Stands right in front of you. Kinda hard to miss. Without getting in the way. Yeah. She's against the wall, start... but specifically in your eyeline. He is in the pantry. Uh, the pantry? Red is in the pantry. All oh, right. You are not in the pantry, though. And I need to talk to you a bit. I am a wee busy. I'm always listening. But I need to keep working. What is wrong? What is on your well, mind? Well, I really wish you would come last night. We had a bit of an I... issue. Sure, the town would have liked to glorify me against me. No, it was somebody doing the exact opposite. In fact, um, Akito's father came in spewing nonsense. <sighs> would I have been around for this to previously happen? Um, you've probably witnessed something like it once. Um, as far as you're aware, it's never become physical, but you don't know about, you don't know that it became physical yet. Oh no, Toshi's telling him. Oh yeah, no, no, no. But like (laughs) prior to this conversation, you don't know that it has ever become physical. And in fact, you've never seen it become physical. Usually it's just a give up this ridiculous venture and yep. yeah, that kind of thing. He is just a loudmouth, stubborn old man, and that's coming from a dwarf, so that's saying something. I I'm mean, sure he true. doesn't actually mean any harm. No, Could from what I can tell, he meant it. What happened? Well, it got very physical. What do you mean physical? Explaining the situation. Toshi will recount the situation. A lot more serious than you first assumed. It's a lot more serious than you've ever seen. I almost stabbed him. Uh, was he drunk? You don't know. I would have 100% been able to smell it if he was yelling in my face, which he did. Roll me a... uh, Just a straight intelligence check. Let's hope I don't screw this one up. Mm. You don't. You don't remember smelling alcohol in his breath. Not from my knowledge, he was not drunk. Even then, that still doesn't excuse horrendous behavior such it as that. It does definitely does not excuse it, but it might give us an insight to his happens. Uh, it would be remiss of me to say that I didn't feel bad but I was not to know that this was to happen and try as I might, I cannot protect everybody. Uh, Amiko is a much more skilled person than she lets on. How is she about it this morning? Probably much worse than what she was letting on. As with most people. Toshi will stare directly into your eyes, as with most people. We tend to hide our emotions and our grief. I'm going to make contact with a bit of shield that I'm bashing up <laughs> quite strongly. <laughs> that uh, and so you still didn't answer my question, how was she? Well, it's hard to tell. 
Um, she was acting like she needed a day by herself. I helped her fix did. her hair. What happened to her hair? Uh, she cut it or off. Did you explain? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I'm sure that was the best that she could do at that point in time without endangering her father's life. Sometimes people just do need to be hit over the head with a stick a few times. Doesn't necessarily mean stabbed through the gut with a rapier, though. No, but you can, you can leave some names without killing somebody. Just as a note, Vorin, you have actually never seen wield that weapon. Ever. Ever. But Toshi said before, when she said that she explained the situation, mm -hmm. that she's yeah. cut her hair off with it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, you, yeah, you have never seen her wield it before. Mm -hmm. Might m probably gives you a little bit more insight into how endangered she felt at the well, time. It's fair. Still doesn't necessarily mean stabbing somebody through the gut. <laughs> For sure. Like. No. But it still would have been nice for you to be there, especially with how the town favors you. Doubt the so town they... means anybody of actual renown. I am but a humble smith and clergyman, and that is all I remain. As much as I would have liked to have been there and be able to help, I doubt my presence would have made a difference to his reactions. No, to someone but... like him, I doubt I mean more than an ash mark or a, a singe on my mm. apron. And that is his folly, and he shall learn it. Shall he? And are you going to be the one to show him so? <sighs> I would advise against so. I would love to. We'll see if the time it presents itself. And maybe we shall. Um, Hopefully we don't. I don't like stabbing people too much. I don't like hurting people. <laughs> no, I don't it's not like always... hurting people who should be considered an ally. I would much rather talk to people. And I doubt there is words that I could have said to uh, no. sway his anger at this But you're point. much more intimidating than I am. <laughs> um... <laughs> If you haven't noticed, Lass, I'm four foot two, eighty four kilos. I'm not exactly intimidating against a lord that is part of the family that started the town that we are currently residing in. Somebody like that is so, and forgive my shortness of tongue, so full of their own worth that anybody else cannot swear their words or their feelings. Stature does not dissuade the blade, though. I don't condone attacking a fellow person in the tavern. Maybe not to kill. Maybe not even to hurt. But a flourish can at least remind people that they are not the only ones in charge and to remind them of their own mortality is sometimes the best way of doing it feel like he is not a person you could remind of his own mortality riches and fame has a way to poison people's minds that are beyond mortal wounds um i'm sorry i truly am and I will see Amiko later if she is willing. She most likely will for you. She seems to take a liking to you. But I doubt there is much I could have done. Honestly. I, like I said, I'm what a humble smith and servant of the god Torag. Um, I'm not sure what you expect of me. 
First of all, you may be a foot shorter, but you're at least twice my weight. Second of all, you're a dwarf. People don't underestimate dwarves. You've not been in this town long. <sighs> well, at least come with us for the next few times. Hopefully, if it happens again, we'll all be there and have a say in the problem. Did the other two say or do anything? No. Of course not. What do you mean, of course not? I don't expect them to get into the problems of them. Do you not believe that they are good people? What is good in this circumstance? Is it loyalty or is it something else? If in my uh, <laughs> divine wisdom I was to ascertain good or evil, I would I would uh, separate it as such. Selflessness and selfishness. Were they selfish people who were to act out against their own better self to protect somebody they they didn't have to? Or did they sit there watching what was happening and and just let it happen? Were they selfish in the care only for themselves? Or were they selfless in their care for others around them? They did not move from what I could tell, though all eyes were upon us. And was that out of fear of their own well-being or a carelessness of those around them? I would have you ask them after you're done tonight. Yes. Because I know one of them has been wanting to meet a friend of yours. It might be a good time to figure out who they are from this. And frankly, how he has been going is uh, not in his favor. And my friend is not one not a people person and i would be concerned as to bring them into his nature not for their safety but for my close friend's safety um i will not be joining you at the tavern tonight it's highly unlikely that uh the lightning strikes twice in two days, in the same spot. I have a lot to do. Um, perhaps in the morrow, I shall join you. Um, you said Amiko needs the day to herself. Yes. I will grant least, her that respect. At if least that is what knowing she wishes. that you're around would be good. I yeah. am always around less. Uh, people know where I am. People know where I live. I don't make a secret of that in the town. How far away really speak my... is Vorn from the tavern? Good question. You've changed where I live twice already, so you bit. <laughs> Let's do it for a third Plus, time. Let's go on the hinterland. Oh. <laughs> Where did I say you lived? Uh, We're still on the hinterlands map. Just no, saying. No, you shouldn't be. Oh, there we go. Cool. I was going to yeah. say, you shouldn't be. Yeah. Well, you have said that I lived on the corner of uh, Wet Dog Alley, but you've also said that I was in Bent Street. 
So. There's Wet Dog Alley. I'm blind, I can't see. Wet Dog Alley is right over here. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. My cat wants back into my room. Why? <laughs> ah, either one. You pick. I'll take this building at Ben Street. <laughs> All right, that looks about the right size. Yeah, and it's got a chimney, so yeah, that for sure, for sure. The forge. Yeah, cannon. That's where you live. It's cannon. And next week it'll be three houses down. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, in fact, in game, their house is magic and will move. <laughs> I don't know where the rust dragon is. I can't remember. 17? Uh, I did say 37, but I did say I would uh, I would check. Um, guess what I didn't do? Check. You didn't check. <laughs> Got it. Understandable. Let me... Yeah. Okay, Chunky, you can uh, stay out of there. Just... Oop. And four is the way. It's not gonna come here, right, boy. But yes, Toshi. I'll post it in the Discord. I couldn't be bothered actually finding it now. But it's either it. I, I think it's thirty-seven. It could be twenty-five. Twenty-three. So. 23. So the 37 not or 23, even, it's one of those. Not a football field away? Oh, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's one, it's, it's not, not far. Mm. Even, like, either way, it's not far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not the other side of town. Yeah. It's like a, yeah. it's like a street or two over at most. Yeah. Heard a kitty. Yes. Mm. He decided to be in my lap. About what time is this, do you reckon, that you're having this conversation? Um, 8 a.m.-ish. So first Toshi. thing in the morning. Oh. Yeah. Super early in the morning. Yeah. Okay. Um, during the conversation, you hear a knock at the door. I will put I have it down, seeing as I've already stopped mm -hmm. mostly yep. um and go and answer the door so she's right. going to find a spot to hide uh so i answer the door good morning uh who is it at the door it's a messenger um rusty dragon is number 37 i was correct i feel a little bit no. vindicated on that one there <laughs> and so you should yeah <laughs> um all right so th there is a messenger and he says uh yeah half bows master Warren, i have a message here from uh sheriff hemlock for you excellent excellent and he hands it over i Open take it, it and read the message what does it he, say uh says i have received word of some troubling news um mm -hmm. i am out on patrol with a couple new guards just to begin to um, training them proper. However, um, I would like to meet with you and the rest of your group tonight, possibly this afternoon, 6 p.m., if this works for you, at my, in my office. His office? Cool. Yeah, his office. Um, I'll tell the person to wait. Yep. I will he, go he, he and wants. grab he the... Wants. Yeah. Yep. Oh, well, I'll tell him to wait as I walk away. Um, go grab the seven shields that I made the day before. Yep. <laughs> uh, it will be there. And send him on his way. Understood. 
and he uh, um, says, "What? What? What are? What are these?" They're the record seven of the rec- forty requisition shields that he asked for. Just deliver them to his oh, office. Oh, deliver them to to the show. Uh, yes, of course, Master yeah. Dwarf, Master Varen. Um, is there anything else I need to deliver to him? No. Thank you. And he like awkwardly they half just... bows. Tell him that we will be there. Yes. And take the kids. Yes. Thank you. And yeah, you see him head up, head off up the road. Uh, as I close the door, mm-hmm. Toshi. Yes. Can you find others and tell them that we need to be at the sheriff's office at six pm sharp? I have work to do. Yeah, I can. All right. Thank you. And as she goes to leave, I will be like, Toshi. Yes. You're doing a great job. I appreciate you. Thank you. And then I'll go back into the forge and continue working. Toshi walks, but faster this time. (laughs) And held just a little bit higher. (laughs) No, no. Compliments don't go over well with Toshi. (laughs) (laughs) Too bad. I know, too bad. I know someone else's compliments don't go uh, go along with very well. <laughs> this guy, this guy, this guy, right here. <laughs> so, Toshi, you uh-huh. saw Solomon come into the Rusty Dragon and head upstairs. So you have a feeling he's probably up in bed. Uh-huh. Merc, however, you have no idea. Where that where where Merc is. Oh god. Oh. I pop my head into the back room, like of of, of the inn. Yeah. Of the inn. Yep. So that I could probably talk to on the service. Mm-hmm. Do you any of you know where Merc is? Uh he left this morning, um just before you did. Uh just before you came down, actually. Um Yeah. Oh. oh dear. Uh, he didn't okay. say where he was going. He seems to keep to himself mostly. Toshi's going to go upstairs. Solomon, you just hear a knock, 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 knock. Yeah, Solomon, you are rudely awakened about two hours into your nap, into your eight hour nap by Toshi. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> on your door. It's not loud. It, it's like oh, but soft, it's fast. but slowly gets higher. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. All right. Yep. Uh, I guess I have to wake up and, and go and literally open the door in my underwear. Uh, yes. Uh, so she's yep. standing there at, at a grand total five foot two, staring directly up at you. It's probably like mid chest height kind of thing. <laughs> Toshi looks you up and down and says, I thought you'd be bigger. Anyway, uh, meet over at the sheriff's office about 6 p.m. See you there. And I'll be reminding you an hour beforehand. All right. I close the door and go back to sleep. Just on the bed. (laughs) Fair. Does that disturb my uh, my fatigue? My unticked fatigue? Definitely, definitely disturbs your rest. But unless you're woken up sort of before you can get a full kind of eight hours of sleep. Yeah. It's a bit like At least six uh, hours of sleep, actually. Oh, six hours. Oh, eight yeah, hours true. of rest. Yeah. Eight, eight hours, hours of rest. rest six hours. Six of hours of sleep. That's fair. Okay. Yeah. So that probably wouldn't have interrupted the no. rest. Not really. No. I mean, it interrupted it, but it didn't oh. interrupt the quote unquote rest. Mm hmm. It's not like oh, you have to start God. again, because you've already got two hours of sleep. Yeah. God, I would yeah. be so mean if I did that. A great yeah. idea. Yes, you would be. <laughs> All right, so Toshi, how are you going to find Merc? First, Toshi's going to go into their room, put their hat against the wall, and go, where is he? <laughs> <laughs> no, just like, bonk. Just... <laughs> I have no idea where he even goes during the night. God damn it. <sighs> Can 
Toshi has no idea where Mark is. <laughs> you could ask around Zero. town. Hey, have you uh, seen Merc anywhere? Have you seen a tiefling anywhere? I mean, pretty much everyone knows him by name now. Yeah. So you can just People say, hey. keeping tabs on where he is. Oh, yeah. Pretty much. Someone's <laughs> gotta know where he is, basically. Toshi's gonna go up to some of the guards on patrol and just ask. Yeah, for sure. And uh, one of them says, oh, he uh, walked by here and probably an hour or so ago. Um, he was heading to the north end of town. An hour ago. I don't know if he's still there now, but that's where he was. Oh god, that's where we didn't leave town. <laughs> Imagine Merck's just gone. <laughs> <laughs> also, um... Do you know about much about the what happened last night? I'm just curious. Uh, you're asking the guard? Yes. Uh, he says, uh, how do you mean? He was genuinely confused. I would, expect it, I would have expected to be more of a rumor. Okay. Have a wonderful day. No, wait, wait. What happened you... last night? <laughs> wait! <laughs> Come back! <laughs> <laughs> you are the worst! I love it! Oh, she's a little bit of a trickster! Yeah. So... Wait, 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 come back, what happened? <laughs> it's like... So she turns around a corner... It's just gone. And then... Gone. Yeah. Like, Amazing. empty street. So she's gone. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Yeah, okay. Um, so yeah, so you head towards the north end of town. Uh-huh. So she's gonna go up to another set of guards. Yeah. Same question. Ask them where, if they've seen a mark anywhere. Uh, he said, uh, one of them says, um, the, the tiefling, right? Yes. Right. Um, I believe, is that him that walked out sort of towards the old light? That was him, right? Oh, he's, okay, thank God he yeah. didn't go out too far out of time. Yeah, I'm, I think I think he went that way. I'm not really sure. Okay. Um, do you know anything about what happened last night? What do you mean last night? Till she walks away. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> what happened last night? <laughs> Till she did oh the second God. one on purpose. Of course she did. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait! Come on. <laughs> you definitely hear the mutter. <laughs> Heroes, <laughs> adventurers, classic. <laughs> okay, Toji heads towards the White House, or the Lighthouse. Hey, look, Lighthouse, White House, same, same. Um, <laughs> go ahead and roll me a perception check. Okay. Let's not flunk this. If I can find where the P skills are. Under P. Yeah, I'm trying to find... Oh, right there. 20. Yeah, cool. Um, You see a single solitary figure sitting on the beach. It's... Yeah. Merc. Uh, Merc, it's pretty easy to notice Toshi heading your way. <laughs> I turn my head and look. I'm like... I'll just shrug and just keep looking out. Yeah, fair. You need at the sheriff's office at 6 p.m. Okay. He waves like, all right. I'll be reminding you two hours beforehand. And cut yourself on all that air draft. Okay. Toshi's just going to stand there for like 10 minutes. It's like watching you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly like that, Chuck. Just anything. So anything. while Toshi's standing there staring at you, Merc, are you just ignoring her? Pretty much, I'm used to it. Toshi's going to go right into your blind spot. 
just sort of wave their hands around a bit. Anything? Anything? I told you I'll be over there. Have a good day. Fine. And Toshi runs off. Toshi heads off. And when Toshi goes back into town, Toshi's going to find another pair of guards. Yep. Do you know where Mark is? Um. No. Okay. Do you know what happened last night? Last night. Yes. I mean, I know what happened last night. Do you want to know what happened last night? I know what happened last night. Oh, you do? I do. What happened last night? (laughs) (laughs) Nothing you need to worry about. Oh, we both know you're lying now. Oh, would you really like to know? (laughs) I already know. You already know? You were... That's incredibly rude for one of the so-called heroes of Sandpoint to be looking through my bedroom window like that. My wife will be very oh. displeased. Why would I ever want to look at that? It's too short anyway. Toshi walks away. <laughs> rude! <laughs> you, hear, you hear the other guard killing himself laughing. <laughs> Damn, the shade. Amazing. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. That face ain't worth the family jewels, (laughs) hon. Wow. Wow. (laughs) Wow. And fade to black. I mean, <laughs> obviously, right there, fade to black. That's that's it. That's the, the Toshi the just murdered is, the entire world. Like, <laughs> the best part is nobody will believe him. Right? Whoa! No chill. Jeez. Wow. Amazing. None. None at all. Uh, the pair oh, boy. dramatically. Wow. Okay. So uh, we, we jump forward in time because I'm not even dealing with the rest of the day after that. Uh, Toshi, you remind, you remind, you remind Merc and uh, Solomon that you're meant to be at the um, sheriff's office at 6 p.m.? Yes. And you head that um, way. Are you picking up Varun on the way? What, when Toshi goes to remind Merc, Toshi will sneak in, build a sand castle, and then remind him. Oh, for sure. That's Mac, it. you hear you hear behind Nothing you else. Toshi say, "Don't forget, two hours, sheriff's office." <laughs> you you you, you look know, over the shoulder and right. there's a there's a absolutely immaculate, amazing sandcastle. It's it's a good like two and a half feet by two and a half feet, and it's like a foot and a half a foot and a half tall. It's amazing. I use my hand to take it apart. <gasps> rude. Oh, that's rude. So mean. Eh, sand anyway. Don't cut yourself on the edge. Have a good day. <laughs> Toshi has Probably. had a long week. Yes, yeah, she has. Yes, she has. <laughs> oh, she's letting it out now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, do you pick? Do you guys pick up Voron on the way to the uh, on the way to your meeting? Yes. Voron is. Ten minutes early to the sheriff's meeting, carrying the five shields that he finished today. Um, okay. Cool. Would you like some help with that, Warren? So she's just okay. there next to you. All of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, no. T- at I'm this good. point, I I think it's sort of Toshi's thing, just appearing out of nowhere. Yeah, pretty much. Oh. Yeah. Four I'm knows good. that Thank better you. than anyone. <laughs> Four knows that better than anyone else at this point. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. 
Um, so you head in and you're shown directly to the sheriff's office. You walk in and the sheriff is there along with an elven woman that you haven't seen before. Um, the sheriff says... Any familiarity? Uh, no, none. Okay. Um, the sheriff says, Ah, um, these are the heroes of Sandpoint that I was telling you about. Uh, actually, Varen. You recognize her. Okay. This is Shalalu Endosana. She is not quite a bounty hunter or a survivalist or a mercenary, but some like like a mix of all three. Um, she comes through once or twice a season, she buys supplies and stays for a couple days. Always stays in the same room at the Rusty Dragon, completely free of mm-hmm. charge. And yep. uh, eats and drinks free of charge at the Rusty Dragon. You know that she and Amiko have a very long-standing friendship. Okay. Are we talking um, about like, uh, uh, historical nod friendship? Politely. She nods back, and obviously she has familiarity with who you are as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, the sheriff introduces her to you and says that, and just sort of gestures for you to do the same yourselves to her. She says, um, uh, oh, Voron, Voron I know, but the rest of you I, I've never seen before. Who might you be? I'm Toshi. Toshi? Yes. Yep. And you, Tall, Dark, and Mysterious? Looking directly at you, uh, Merc? Oh, I thought he was talking about Brawler. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, you got me Merc. Merc, yes. And... Tall, dark, and brawly. Who might you be? Bronze, bronzed and ginger. Yeah. Uh, Solomon Ashwood. Solomon Ashwood. Ashwood. Of the Ashwood Forest, southeast. That's the one. I see. How uh, it, how are things yeah. out there at the moment? I got it. I got it right this time. Uh, tra- Traveling traveling is getting to be a little bit tricky. Uh, I see. There's there's more. More going on out there than uh, than we really think there should be. I see. Um, giants again. Indeed. I see. Yeah. I haven't been out have that way heard... in a few months. Unfortunately, I don't have any more information from that area. But what I can tell you is that there are no giants, uh, at least as far west as Mosswood. I haven't reached this far. If I, I have heard the rumors that they are heading this way in in some not force, but hmm, they seem to have some kind of intent behind them. My uh, information network not a hundred percent reliable, but I haven't come this far east yet. Okay. Out well, west. I hope I can. I hope I can maybe ask you about this again. Most certainly. Um, I'm leaving town tomorrow, probably early morning-ish. We can speak either after this or tomorrow morning. It says, in any case, uh, I was just briefing the sheriff here on some grim news from Mosswood, where I have been for the last month or, t- month or so. I stop by every now and then. I give the good sheriff and Mayor Devrin a uh, a report on the state of the hinterlands and um i do need to say that things seem too active for my liking in that area the goblin tribes are mobilizing in a way that they haven't before in a very long time.
Is there any way to disrupt it? I don't know yet. Um, I am waiting for one more of my one more one more informant to get back to me. I should be receiving a message in the next few days. Um, however, I don't think there's anything we can do in the next week or two. Um, although you seem to be, from what I've heard at least, <laughs> quite adept goblin slayers yourselves. There might be some work for you. Let me get into the details. And she sort of spreads out a map. Go back to the interlands. Toshi will let out a sigh at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Relief. Um, she says, uh, only, only yesterday, um, mid-morning, there was a, one of the latest of increasingly frequent raids by goblins. Uh, a farm south of Mosswood was completely burnt to the ground. Um, I was thankfully nearby, and I, while I couldn't save the farm, I did rescue the family and drive off the goblins. Um, the family is safe. They are staying in a nearby farm for now. But I was hoping that this goblin problem would go away and, as it normally does, just implode on itself. However, Baylor has told me of your work against the goblins. Well done. I have, de I have dedicated the last several years of my life from keeping them causing too much trouble, but they're tenacious and fecund little runts, like weeds that bite. There are five major goblin tribes in the region, and traditionally they're pretty good at keeping each other in line with the uh, intertribal squabbles and the like, yet from what I've been able to piece together, members of all five tribes are involved, involved in the raid on Sandpoint. Fair number of Mosswood goblins I dealt with yesterday were already pretty beat up, and there was a lot of chatter about the Longshanks that killed so many of them. Now that I've met you, it seems pretty obvious who that is. You've made an impression on them at least. In any event, uh, the fact that the five tribes are working together greatly disturbs me. Goblin tribes, I'm not sure if you're aware, don't tend to get along unless they've got something big planned, and big plans require big bosses. I'm afraid that there has been someone that has moved in on the goblins and organized them. Judging by these recent raids and what they're organizing, seems like bad news for all of us. At this point, the sheriff mm -hmm. speaks up and it says, I'm actually going to be taking a few of my guards south to Magnamar. From what Shalalu has told me, we are not going to be able to train the militia in time. I will be training the militia. And in fact, I have already petitioned... Um, what's the Forge Master's name again? I forget instantly. I've petitioned... Eldris Keldr Torgas. I've, peti Eldr I've petitioned Forge Master Tor Torgas to Torgas. assist you yep. in finishing the remaining uh, requisition as fast as possible. This is nothing to. This is nothing against your work. We need speed. I am, but one dwarf is a forge. It makes sense to. I apologize for not asking you first. I could not think of a better man to lead this than Master Taurus. He is a brilliant forge master and has taught me many things. If, if a cantankerous man, I uh, and he sort of rubs his shoulder, definitely didn't come away from that encounter unscathed. He's the only one that scares me in this town. Not uh, many do. <laughs> I uh, pride myself on my ability to come and go without being harmed. Mm, yes, well, you are one of his kind and seemingly following in his footsteps, so... With all due respect to the great Forge Master, I don't believe there is any others of his kind, as much as I may try. I see. Understandable. In any case... um. While I'm out of town, can the four of you work together 
be seen in town visibly. I know that you already are. I keep hearing people talk of you. However, locals have seemed, seemed to have taken to you and seeing you, you around town will do a lot for keeping their worries down over the next few days. Um, I will be taking some guards with me, so there will be a shortage. I haven't had a chance to set up training for the new recruits yet. However, I have gotten to know them all personally, and as soon as I have a spear and a shield for each of them, that will begin in earnest. Um, How many recruits are there so far? So far, 15. Which how, is... how much of the requisition is the Great Forge Master taking on? If you do not mind, may I ask him? I... I don't know. I asked him to help you, and he said that he would have a talk to you about it. I'm assuming that he hasn't yet. I will go and speak to him this afternoon. I appreciate that. I, I don't to get another hammer thrown at me. Um, you've got to learn to catch. You've got to learn to catch. I see. Catch the hammers? Is that your secret, <laughs> Master Dvorin? Uh, he, he's usually very dour, but can't help himself but it's a slight grin. Just a slight crack in the facade. Um... In any case, uh, Shalalu asks, uh, may I join May I join the four of you at dinner at the Rusty Dragon? Um, I would like to hear more from your standpoint from about the, about the raid on Sandpoint. And in return, I have information for you on the goblin tribes of the area. Absolutely. Just uh, order the hero special and they'll send you straight Not to that Not on table. your life. Alrighty then. Uh, and if anyone I'm, else orders, I'm going to finally put the shields down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you've been holding them the entire time. So, uh, the sheriff's like, "Oh, thank you, thank you." I, uh, I receive, I received the other ones. Uh, much appreciated. It's amazing, but yeah. Uh, I'm afraid if I have to talk to my dear Togus, I don't think I will be joining you for dinner. My apologies, uh, Shalalu. It would be nice to get to know you better, but this will be an endeavor of uh, patience. I see. Well, in any case, if things go miraculously well, come and meet us. I'm sure we'll still be there. Please. Yeah. Thank you. I shall. I don't appreciate bow it. Bow silent. She bows back. Just, all right, I need a drink. Let's go. And he just walks out. <laughs> cool. um, the sheriff says, uh, Is there anything else you need of me? Nope. No, I'll bow and I'll leave. Thank uh, you. So she's the last one. I'll go to the Rust Dragon uh -huh. with the group, uh -huh. uh, pick up two drinks. And two meals to go. Yep. And then make my way to Torgus. Sorry, my cat is like staring at me. Dead pans like, you should be done by now. What are you doing? <laughs> Not quite. No. Sorry, Horace, you gotta wait. Yeah, Horace. Um <laughs> Okay, not a worry. Um right, make me squid you again, Horace. <laughs> he gets real mad when you do that. Um, so Shalalu does begin to download some of the information to you. Um, so she says, as I said before, and I'm just going to, what you hear, Vorin, and then we'll skip over. Yeah. And then, yep. yeah. Um, oh. as I said before, there are five major tribes in the region. The closest to Sandpoint are the Bird Cruncher Goblins. They live in the caves along the western edge of the, uh, Devil's Platter. Um, traditionally, these are the least aggressive of the five. Um, the To the south, we've got the Lick Toad Goblins of the Brine Stump Marsh. Um, they're excellent swimmers. They're more pests than anything, to be, to be, to be honest. They're easily taken care West. of. Huh? To the west. 
pests. Based on the compass. No, you said to the south. Based on the compass on the map, they would be to the west. The, the compass is wrong. No. <laughs> it is the compass on the map. It is wrong. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Ignore okay. the compass. Don't make me put a square over it, because I will. The compass is wrong. North is directly up. Because that's that dumb. goes down. Um, to the east are the seven tooth goblins of Shanks Wood. Uh, they have secured a place for themselves by raiding Sandpoint's junkyard and rebuilding stolen refuse into armor and weapons. Further east are the Mosswood goblins, which is the ones that we had that I have recently had issues with. Um, they are likely the largest tribe, but. Traditionally, they've been held back by feuding families within their own ranks. And uh, finally, finally, there are the Nettlewood Goblins. Uh, they live on the Nettlewood coast atop a small island that some say holds a passing resemblance to a, de to a decapitated head. Uh, I have seen this island and they're not wrong. It, it's it's, it's kind of close to, to that. Um, at this point, you reach the the tavern, you grab those meals, and you go. Um, Shalalu notes that, and you are now gone for that. For the rest of you, you sit down, you get some meals. Um, everyone roll me a sense motive. As Amiko shows up a good ten minutes after... Jalalu um, enters the tavern. I think we all know why. Cool. Um, Amiko, you see her sort of poke her head down and like notice, and then a grin. And one of the servers catches Amiko's eye, nods, and heads into the kitchen. The rest of the servers come out, and you'll notice. The kitchen is now back in full swing. <laughs> it's fully automated self. <laughs> Amika comes down dressed as she normally is, new haircut and all, um, and steps behind the bar, grabs a few drinks, brings them over to you, and you will notice, with the exception of Solomon, so Toshiko and Merc, you both notice... Quite a fondness between the two. Knew it. Um, it's not like it, it. It's like seeing an old friend again after a long time. But there's a tenderness to it that, yeah. Chalalu gets a little <laughs> flustered and says, "Uh." Thank you for thank you for um allowing me to stay here again, Amiko. And I very much appreciate it. I'll I'll be leaving again tomorrow morning after I receive some some information. Um no, I will be leaving again to go and receive this information. And she's just stumbling over herself. And Amiko says, You are more than welcome at any time, Shalalu. I'm glad to see you. And uh heads back behind the bar and starts serving. So she has a mischievous and knowing smile. <laughs> of course she does. <laughs> um, so over over the next probably hour or so, at some point, depends, huh? Interesting. I'm gonna jump back over to Voren because depending on how he comes at this, depends on how he how early he comes back. <laughs> you knock on the door, Voren, and. <laughs> The door opens, and you see Cadre. Cadre, I'm pretty sure that's it. It's K Torgus. Ka Torgus. You see Forge Master Torgus standing there in front of you with a, quite a solemn look. He says, "Well, lad, I best you, I guess you'd best come in." This is an unusually warm welcome for you, my mm. friends. Trouble seems to be brewing. 
Sheriff did come and see me earlier. I did was I'm going aware. to send for you tomorrow, as I heard that you have been working, and I figured you'd work well into the night. Come in. Let's see. <laughs> Seems that the sheriff had need of me before I had my chance to continue. Uh, and I will lay down a food and drink mm -hmm. for him as I normally do. Mm -hmm. um, and I will put mine on, on the table and I will stand and wait for him to stop before I sit down like I normally do. Yeah, he just starts eating. It's just, cool. yeah, no, no prayer, nothing. Just straight up just starts eating. No uh, complaints this time. No protests. Ugh. Maybe I'm getting soft in my old age. Sit, boy, eat. You need it. Maybe. I will sit. I'll take a swig of my ale first uh, before I take the food. Yep. Not a problem. And perhaps something has you more shook than normal. I wouldn't say Once shook. Once upon a time, I believed that you were unshakable. I'm not shaken, lad. And I would thank you not to call me such again. What I am is annoyed, frustrated, cranky at new. today's youth. That's nothing new. Again, that's nothing new. And then the sheriff told me that you had some damned fool idea of starting a militia. Wasn't my idea. It was your idea. You put the idea into these what? boys' heads. I am whatever not you said to <laughs> whatever you said to them, whatever you said to them, galvanize them into action. Sounds like a real man of the cloth to me. And he just sort of it's, that hangs in the air for a second. Sometimes you just can't escape the past. Of course not. And he will be visibly chewing on his bottom lip yeah. after Diana's. Of course you can't. Why do you think I agreed to help? One would say that you agreed to help because you didn't believe in my skills to get this done. From what I heard, we may be in trouble if these... Short, disgusting green skin goblins are mobilizing in force. Have you faced them in force before? And I'm not talking a couple dozen, I'm talking <clears throat> possibly hundreds. Bloodthirsty little Once. wretches. Once. Mostly I dealt with giants. I know. But there was one one battle against goblins. Hundreds of them? Hundreds of them. Hmm. And how many people did you full... have behind you? Full battalion, I assume. Yeah. It was in full force then. I'm not sure if you've noticed, lad, but Sandpoint doesn't have a full battalion of nope. dwarves. Nope. They do not. That's why I'm helping. Only reason. Because I'm one of the idiots that lives here. As am I. That's why you're helping. And you know, full well, I will die to protect those I care about. Even those I don't in town that make a nuisance of themselves, but... You notice he's, he's sort of... His eyes are unfocused. He's not with you right now. Um, he's remembering something. Mm -hmm. Shakes his head, snaps back into it and says, My forge is not quite large enough for the scale that I want to be doing this on. So we, we, will, we will be using yours. It is larger than mine. It, it and it is. It's a little larger. Um, you have you you you've done uh, weaponry and armor before. Yeah. You don't really know what Torgus makes. It's practically whatever whatever hits his fancy at any given time. Yeah. 
a lot of intricate metalwork rather than weaponry and armor. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Typical of a mostly yeah. retired dwarf thing. Exactly, exactly. Um, so, yeah, he says, I will be helping you. I it wasn't going to argue it. It will be interesting to see you at work. I was under your patronage for a while. Mm. You have always interested me. It's a shame that you are so militaristic. You would have made a good forge master. If we're going to be in my forge, are we going to be working by my rules? That depends entirely on the rules. No throwing hammers at gas. <sighs> there is a particular person that is fond of just dropping in, and I leave my door unlocked. A fool idea. Ah. The only rule I would ask is you do not throw a hammer at anybody, especially not her. Oh, you say? She just so sort of happens to be of that gender. I see. <laughs> well, I promise not to throw hammers at any fetching young maidens that may or may not be hopelessly in love with a fool of an idiot of a dwarf. The only fool of an idiot I see was the old man in front of me. Rude. Get out of my house. <laughs> the ninth has its way with us all. Now I'll turn around and walk out. Oh. You see his face go dark. Like, dark. And says, boy, you stop. He let you go. You were there for a good probably 10 minutes. I wouldn't have eaten all my meal, nor finished my drink. Probably not. He started eating. He started prodding well before I did. Yup. This is the only... The only conversation of its ilk that you have had Mm. with him. Mm -hmm. It's an outlier, it's an anomaly, and it's weird. Take what you will from that. That's why I brought up the ninth to finish it. Yep. Head back, mm-hmm. and Shalalu is in full conversation with the others. I'm assuming you just I come will... in and take a seat. No, I will grab a drink and go home. Uh, she does notice you and says, Ah, Voren, I highly recommend you come and sit and listen to this information. It will be important. My apologies, but I'm sure Toshi will be more than willing to fill me in in the morning. It was an abrupt conversation. Shit. It was an abrupt conversation. <laughs> and I need some air. She's annoyed. Um, she nods and she lets you go. The energy coming off me right now would be don't um, push these buttons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Toshi's scrambling to get a notebook now. Yeah. And a piece of charcoal. Yeah. So, um, I'm just going to list the, list, list the information that she gives you. I'm not going to roleplay the entire conversation. Um, she makes a point of saying that goblins generally live short and violent lives. It is unusual for a single goblin to receive to achieve any real measure of notoriety. But when one does, it is well earned. There are currently six goblins that in, in the region that enjoy the status of hero. 
Big Gugmut uh, from Mosswood, who it is said had a hobgoblin for a mother and a wild boar for a father. Horovus is a champion of the Seventh Tooth tribe, well known for is his short K O R U V U S, Corruvus. K U R K O R U V O R U S. Corruvus. Yes. Uh, well known for a short temper, as he was for his prized possession. Magic long sword, sized for a human, um, despite that it was too large for him to properly wield. Horovus vanished several months ago after he supposedly discovered a quote-unquote secret hideout in a cave along the cliffs, but the goblins remain convinced he's still out there, a ghost or worse. Um, Vorka? Which... Sorry? Which cliffs? Um, the Devil's Platter. Okay. Um. Vorka is a notorious goblin cannibal who lives in the Brine Stump Marsh, a hero, quote-unquote, mostly to goblins other than the Lictoad tribe. Rend Wattle Gutwad is the obese chieftain of the Brine Stump goblins, and it is said that he never leaves his throne. You're going to have to say that name again. Rend Wattle, R-E-N-D, W-A-T-T-L-E. Rend Wattle. Gutwad, G-U-T-W-A-D. Rip Nugget, spelled how it sounds, is the leader of the Thistletop Goblins and controls what the five tribes agree is the best lair. And then there is Brithasmus. B R U T H A. I. Yep. I'm not there yet. Okay. <laughs> Toshi's very quickly trying oh, yeah. to get notes down. Oh yeah, and this is kind of the speed that Shalalu is firing things at you. Like she's she's listing information and yeah. Um, oh, when God. she gets to Brithasmus, she she kind of goes dark in the face, like angry. Um, so Brithasmus, B R U T H A Z M U S, Brithasmus. You're going to have to check these notes. That's fine. Send send them. Uh, just just send them through to me in a Discord message, and I'll be more than happy to make any adjustments. Um, okay. infamous bugbear Ranger, who lives in Northern Nettlewood and often often visits the five tribes to trade for things he's stolen from caravans. For alcohol, news, or magic arrows. She notes that Brathasmus has a particular hatred of elves, and they have met on several occasions. Um, to date, neither of them has managed to get the upper hand on the other, but she bitterly vows, she says, and I swear to any god that will listen, I will not be the first to fall in this war of ours. Be able to help with that. Yeah. Um, he says, Hmm. I hope you don't have to fight him alone because he is a foe more dangerous than any I've ever come across. Hopefully, um, no. I would hate that. Uh, she notes that it is getting late, and at this point, you guys have been talking for an hour or so. Like, it's fast, but she gives you a lot of detail. You take down, like, what I've said is the gist of it. Talk for about an hour or so, Voron comes in, leaves um, with a thundercloud above his head. Um, do you guys have any specific questions for Shalalu before we finish for the night? Um, uh, is there a way to tell the difference between goblins from one tribe and goblins from another? Um, usually... Usually, you can tell from where they're raiding. Um, if they're in a, they're in a group of them. Sometimes they wear insignia. Not insignia. That's the wrong word. A symbol. Uh, yeah. Yeah. She says. So if they're wearing a symbol, super easy. That's and she draws out the symbols for you. Says and marks which one each is. Um. So. Otherwise, okay. she said, it can, it, sometimes it can be a little difficult. 
Um, is there any reward we can offer for uh, people who help us to kill goblins? Uh, well, uh, I was asking the sheriff to reinstate the goblin bounty in Sandpoint. Something we do on occasion to try and cull their numbers in, in, in the area. 10 gold pieces for each pair of goblin ears that are bought back in decent shape. I have a few odd questions. Yep. Yeah. While they're moving in groups, who's yeah. the one that you want to go after to disorganize them? Is there any <sighs> minor leadership that we should be aware of? Um, it says Gugmut is Gugmut leads the Mosswood tribes. Um, so possibly him. Uh, I don't know that. Okay. On, 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 honestly, he he's the only one that is a leader. Um, he's not even really a leader. He's just one of the most one of the stronger ones. Uh, and if we can. Take out Brathasmus, I will not be saddened in any way. Um, any of them magical other than Brathasmus? Not that any I am aware have, of. Anyone ha any of them have I don't know. allies that are? There is always there are always shamans, there are always if you can call them alchemists. No mix wizards things together, and then yes. explosions happen. E exactly, so exactly. Uh, unfortunately, I know who the who the players are through interrogations, but I don't know enough about them to give you information on their how powerful they may be. They're more powerful than a normal goblin, but I don't know how much more. Um, how attached are these goblins to their leadership? Honestly, goblins don't follow leaders unless they are strong enough to prove themselves. If the if leadership is taken out, the next strongest goblin usually steps up and procra proclaims themselves the leader until they're taken out by another goblin, so on and so forth. It's a vicious cycle. The uh, older leaders are the most bloodthirsty and the most vicious. I wouldn't call them leaders, I would just call them murderers that take out anyone who defies them. I mean, that is a form of leadership. Um, any fears, dislikes of these tribes? Between them? Anything that... Not Between particularly. Them, particularly. I mean, they fight all the time. The fact that they're mobilizing together leads me to believe that there is something else either one of the one of the leaders of these tribes has stepped up or one of the um some there's some other influence uh we did hear of somebody uh of them saying something about long shanks and their plan so we're guessing that Baylor did say on. something about that he said that there was Possibility that they were being led by by someone by a human. Is that true? Maybe, I'm not sure. We just know about the Longshing. Hmm. Um, have any of them been enticed by necromancy? Uh, not as far as I can tell. Honestly, the more arcane magics. Uh, <laughs> to put not too fine a point on them, are much too advanced for goblin minds as far as i can as far as i know i've never seen a goblin weave arcane magic hmm. well that's the questions that i have for now hmm. uh I'm curious, do you have any other adventuring parties or heroes that will be helping us? Um, 
honestly, I took Baylor's I took Baylor at his word that you guys are <laughs> the people to be talking to about this. There is there isn't anyone else that stood that that stepped up other than the guard, and the guard will be needed here. So it's just you. Right. If needed, okay. I can join you. Um, However, I kind of want to be continuing to search for more information, if at all possible. Is Amiko still close by? Amiko is hovering at the bar. She's just she's hanging out. She's listening, probably. Right. <laughs> I, I want to call her across, if possible. Um, and just ask about the uh, the the lady that she sent after her adventuring party a few days the previous day or a couple of days ago, yep. uh, and find out where she sent them to, etc. And uh, communicate with this lady if she's going in that direction, she can grab those people possibly as well. Yep. They they have already been out there for a couple of days, so maybe they've seen something if nothing else. And she was butch, so. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I would call her butch, but okay. Um, uh, rough. <laughs> um, so um, Amiko comes over and when she's asked, she says, "Oh, um, I, I think she's long gone. To be honest, um, her the rest of her party headed out towards." Um, up towards Riddleport, and they seemed in a seemed in a pretty pretty direct hurry. So she hired, well, dropped a lot of gold and bought one of the fastest horses in town and left as fast as she could. From what I hear, anyway. Oh. Oh well. Uh, I can't think of anything else at the moment. Not a problem. Is there anything else Rob? you needed from me? Or... Toshi's just looking between uh, the two mm -hmm. with a knowing smile. Yeah, Shiloh Lou sort of sits back, arms crossed. Just don't mind me just watching. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and Miko sort of like half kneeling beside the table, elbows up. Like she she hasn't taken a seat, but she's like kneeling next to the table, elbows on it, sort of crossed and sort of like that, and just yeah. She there is a distinct change in her. Um, she's a little bit more subdued, not quite to the point of shyness. But um, okay, Shalalu says, "Where are you going? Where are you going to? Oh, sorry, sorry. What were you... Where are you going to leave?" Uh, I am going to meet one of my informants. I'm assuming you're asking Shalalu. Yes, yeah, she's. I'm. I'm going to meet the last of my informants. He's back out. Uh, back out east. Um, I'm I'm going to be leaving tomorrow. Um, you you wanted to have a chat with me about some things. Uh, yeah the uh, the the goings on in the world, the giants, the things that are changing. Yeah. Uh, um, okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm not quite ready for that. I. Might have to come back to you tomorrow morning. Understandable. In that case, she stands up and she says, I'm going to bed and heads upstairs. You watch Amiko, oh. watch her leave. So she's going to mouth to Amiko, go get her. Amiko just shoots you a look. Shut up. <laughs> I and won't shut up until you a good, tell me otherwise. A good, a, good five, a good five or so minutes later, Amiko heads upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, that's where we're going to end tonight's session. And uh, thank you. <laughs> you guys are going to be the death of me, I swear.
Thanks everybody for hanging out and watching. Um, I'm going to post a link to uh, the Discord channel where you can continue talking with all of us sort of in between here and there and here and there, here and next week. Uh, I do apologize for missing last week. Um, there was some uh, technology okay. issues and so, yeah. Um, I'll post the link to the Discord now. Thanks for watching and we will see you same time same day next week. Thanks so much.